ultimate power in the universe. Hello there. Welcome to Lightsaber Radio, the most outrageous Star Wars show on the web. If you haven't already done it, make sure you smash that subscribe button as well as the bell icon so you will be notified of all of our future episodes. Also, don't forget to press that like button. It helps get these videos in front of other Star Wars fans so they can get in on the outrageousness. So how's everyone doing today? We good? Yeah. <laughs> Garrison. We good, man? <laughs> that was you the most me like mid yawn. Yeah, I was like, that's the most inconvenient time to yawn. Uh, I'm going to be blatantly honest. I am amazing. I didn't have to stay up late because they dropped Kenobi early. Yeah. So that was beautiful. I've been watching Celebration like it's Sunday Sermon. So um, it's amazing. I, everything that we've seen, I'm going to get into a lot of that. A lot of Hasbro stuff, guys. You're going to have to listen to me for more than a minute on Hasbro. That's so, all Oh, the, <laughs> the trailer drops. The trailer drop. Oh, we're going to get into it, but I'm great. I'm just great. Sorry, everybody, for a little bit of tardiness. We had some technical difficulties this morning. My computer just decided it wanted to take a shit at the last minute. Like, like everything just went off. I was like, what the hell? I'm trying to turn it back on. It just won't come on. My phone was downstairs. So I'm like, if I go to, I got to work on this kind of And I'm like, oh, I should tell, I should text everybody, let everybody know that we're going to be running late. Oh, but I, I can't, I can't, I got to get it up. I got to get it up. got to get up. And then finally it just, I don't know what happened. It just came back on. So hopefully we don't have no issues during the live. Especially because we got copyright st struck on the last one, and uh, they took that. like a, they took like a minute out of the show for some reason. I don't, it was weird. So but. what even happened? The one show I missed, and you guys crashed. <laughs> <laughs> goes to shit. Wow. What's funny though is that Kyle and I were going on these long tangents, so we didn't have enough of the video played for them to be able to do so. Which That's what was threw it? me off. The it recap? was the. No, it no was, we was um, doing the we so um lad uh, Bible TV did this um this like kind of like ask oh, um Ewing and Hayden questions right oh yeah yeah and that, then they got the yeah. table where they slide the the, the cup back and forth so we were doing a reaction to that like to their answers and we were literally letting like 20 30 seconds play at a time and then we would talk about what was going on and then all of a sudden just blank. It, everybody was like, where'd you guys go? We're like still talking. We could see everything in the comments, but no, <laughs> nobody could see us. And like, I'm like, what the hell? So CJ gets on his phone and he's looking, he's like, dude, we're still up, but like, can't nobody see us for some reason. Like, I don't know. And then it happened for like a minute and then it just came back on and we just kept going like, fuck them. You know, let's have fun. Shit. We don't right, care. Then. But yeah, they gave us a copyright thing saying we can't monetize that video. And I'm like, I don't care. Which makes fun. no sense because we gave Lad Bible the credit. Yeah. We put them in the notes and everything. So I'm pretty sure if we contacted Lad Bible, they would be like, hey, YouTube, mm -hmm. it's all good. Let them play. I ain't worried about it too much. Any publicity for them is good publicity because they love, I mean, they love to be talked about. And it was a great interview. It was funny. They were, oh, they, gosh. man, you and Hayden are just, they like, you can tell just in that they're acting yeah. together, just the way that they are when they're doing the interviews together. Like them dudes has been friends for years. I mean, they are, they'll never stop being friends. There's nothing that could ever break up their friendship. So like, I didn't, I'm like, screw it. I don't care. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk. And our uh, lovely host, Kim, we don't know where she's at. <laughs> she's probably still on vacation yeah she's, she i'm pretty sure she was trying she's to gone. get here but you know <laughs> yeah we don't know where she's at she's gone oh well <laughs> <laughs> nah she's on vacation right now so we didn't know if she was gonna make it on the show or not today so it's all right us fellas will take care of it we'll have i mean fun. if she drops in she drops in if she doesn't she doesn't it's we if she doesn't we miss her if she does sweet hopefully she'll come yeah, and we have our special guest D is on the show again. Everybody, our, favorite, What's our up? favorite Star Wars actor that's been on the show. He, 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 he man, this up, man. D, you're, you're our guy, you're our go to guy when we want some information. 
Because <laughs> you've been on the set. You, you have that inside perspective of what goes on on the set so you can give us that details because we're going to be talking about Kenobi today. And this is going, I have a feeling this this episode, we might miss out on some of the other things that we do on this episode, uh, on, on our normal episodes, just because I think we're going to be into some depth about what's going on in Kenobi because we all have some mixed feelings on what what is happening. So, who wants to go first and give their opinion of what <laughs> Happen on these first two oh, episodes. CJ's ready. <laughs> All right, go okay. for it, CJ. So in the beginning, I was like stoked. I was overly excited. My woman's in the chat. She can tell you. I was like a little schoolgirl. I was jumping up and down. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my god, the whole time. But yeah. I started catching things where I was like, I don't know about that. I don't. I don't think I like that. Like when the Jedi was being hunted by the Inquisitors, and he runs and hunts down Kenobi. And Kenobi's like, my name's Ben. You know, and then he finally gets down. He's like, what you need to do is bury that in the sand and live a normal life. Never seen that aspect of Obi-Wan Kenobi in my life. Just the, I'm done. I quit. You need to quit because there is no need for this anymore. You're going to get me killed. You're going to get somebody else killed. And uh, sure shit, we found old boy hanging in town square mm-hmm. with no hesitation. Yep. And I just these first two episodes, I, I, I mean, it was an emotional roller coaster. I mean, there's a lot, a lot to it. I think the only thing I overly screamed, and I think I woke up my son for it, was seeing Tamara Morrison as a 501st <laughs> homeless stormtrooper or clone trooper begging for change. I lost my mind. I was like, okay, you, you guys, you guys can do that. You can bring us Rex. I'm telling yeah, you right yeah. now, if you do this, you can give us live action Rex as I throw my blinds. <laughs> Did you think it was kind of weird and like almost inconsistent? The fact that Obi-Wan's arguing that Luke needs to be trained, but yet is bearing his lightsaber and completely like forgetting about everything. Cause I feel like that, like if he's pushing for Luke needing to be trained, why would he be throwing away his lightsaber and pretending like, and well, telling other hunted. Jedi's they're, just they're being hunted. So the last I, I understand that. Him. I understand that. He well, just wants to know. Yeah, I, I guess his commitment is only to protecting Luke and making sure yeah. Luke is ready because at the same time he doesn't know Vader's alive at that point. So why the rush? You know, he can sink into his depression and his solitude, I guess. Right. You know, it gave me some really mixed emotions. Like it really did. I said that I wasn't gonna get overly excited but i also said that it was going to start off slow and it did it started off really slow and it started off explaining exactly what was going on it gave us those details in the story the story okay let me put it like this the story was excellent the way that they drafted the story to bring it out you know you got obi-wan he's just a hermit now you know he is not a jedi no more he done gave up on that entire life you have the Inquisitors come into Tatooine. They're looking for other Jedi. But you have uh, Reva. She's on top of finding Kenobi. So she's like really pushing. You got the Grand Inquisitor like, bitch, slow the hell down. You need to stop because you're, you're, you're obsessed with this. We haven't seen this dude in 10 years. But the story over, overall was very well played out and they gave us the things that we needed to know and i thought that that was real done now the cgi there was some of them parts in the cgi i was like oh man come on y'all y'all could have done better than that but it still was okay the acting pretty well out the whole thing everybody did a pretty good job at acting you know they did the acting was pretty well done i didn't see anything that really pushed me like okay this dude did should they should have got somebody else better to play this part i think everybody did a pretty good job favorite um the the overall story the the way the story arced at certain peaks in 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 each episode i think did a really good job because it built up the anticipation and then let you out and then it built up the anticipation and let you out and then it built up the anticipation and let you out and i thought that that was very well done um the things that i didn't like about the episodes was that 
you got to think about it. Obi-Wan hasn't used the Force. He is completely stricken himself, and he is doing what Yoda told him to do to protect that child. Stay hidden, protect the child. So he's doing what he was told to do, and he's doing it to the best of his abilities. But you can tell that he's having issues because of the nightmares. He's still having the issues. Like he's still going part. through the, the, the thing. It really built you up to let you know that he is in anguish. He is hurting, but he's still trying to follow out his mandate and to the best of his ability. When it came to the Inquisitor, especially the Grand Inquisitor, I think that dude was just too passive. Like this is these are Sith lords or Sith in in, in a general sense, and I think that they were. I think the Grand Inquisitor was just way too just passive, like. Rebus, calm your ass down. You know what I'm saying? We going to catch them. We don't have to do anything. You know, it's like, dude, the Jedi is right there. That dude didn't even light his lightsaber. The Grand Inquisitor didn't even light his lightsaber in the first episode at all. You're in the can or cantina or bar or restaurant or whatever it was, and the only person that lit their lightsaber in that scene was Reva. And I just thought was like, Okay, wait a minute. What's going on, man? The Grand Inquisitor is just like he just they just let the dude escape. He just stops him and lets him escape. Like, what is really going on? So I thought that that was I I like I had so many mixed emotions that it caused me to be like what 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 do I want to happen? And it kind of it, it kind of puts you in that sense of like you like I wanted to I wanted things to happen. But at the same time, I was excited to see what was going to happen. And that came, it, was, it was like a real weird feeling to me because that's not <laughs> something I've ever felt before. Like, I want this to happen, but then I'm so excited to see what they're going to let happen. Yeah. And that's what really got me. That's what really got me to really like, okay, they're doing this different than anything that I have ever really seen before. Because that anticipation on what's going to happen and the things that you want to happen, but then if they don't happen, I wasn't like, like I wanted this to happen, but then it didn't happen and it didn't disappoint me that it didn't happen. It was, it was just really weird. It, it, it gave me some really mixed emotions, but I'm going to honestly say that I liked the way that they did the first two episodes. I really liked the way that they, they formatted them and they showed us, especially when they brought Princess Leia in because she, as a child, it that's her mom. I mean, that's that's her as she's an adult. She's just doing it as a child. And she's a whole lot like Padme. So, and Obi-Wan even says that. And I thought that that was all really good. The only thing that I can honestly say that I didn't like is it was almost like they changed the timeline. I had to go look it up. Because when Reva kills the Grand Inquisitor, I was like, dude, what the hell? We know that Kanan kills the Grand Inquisitor in Rebels. Mm -hmm. So how is Reva killing him now? Why would you change the timeline? And I had to go look it up, and then there's actually the Grand Inquisitor and Grand Inquisitor. So I don't know if these are two different people, and one of them is killed in Rebels, and Reva just kills this one. And there's another. There's a reason that they there's the Grand Inquisitor and then the Grand Inquisitor. There's two of them. So I'm kind of confused at this point. But that's the only thing I didn't like at all of them. I really liked how they played it out, how Obi-Wan was just trying to hide and yeah. trying and succeeding better than anybody else. My favorite thing out of this whole thing is that little girl playing Leia. I am not going to lie to you. That, honestly, if you had to turn back time and get Carrie Fisher as a little girl, that little girl embodied that she took that role so seriously. She was good at it. She, you could see that she was using some force sensitivity when she was like with her cousin or cousin. And she would sat there and it's like, she read into his mind and just knew his insecurities about his father. Or when he read it, she read into Obi-Wan and, obviously misread the situation, but read into Obi-Wan and kind of just made Obi-Wan feel bad about himself. Like she honestly is so brutally honest and just witty and had these moments of pure, pure Leia. It just, it made me smile so much because like 
if you were to take care of Leia, that's what I wanted to see is the mischievousness. The I'm going to do it my way. You can get the hell past that and come with me. Or you can stand there and look like an idiot and be like, I don't know where she went. Like you could do either one. And I, I loved that. And like I said, I can't get over Tamara Morrison having a cameo. I thought that was beautiful. I think that was well-placed. It gives us kind of an idea of what we see happen to some of the stormtroopers. Cause if you notice that's a five Oh first, you know, that's Vader's Legion. And now he's sitting on a streets of a slum planet begging for change. Do we honestly, do we get more of Tamara Morrison in this? Like, do we, do we you'll think see, that we I, get I, more I mean, you'll see Tamara Morrison pop up all over the place because of um, the situation with the stormtroopers and, and something like that is a, is, a direct indication to say that, yeah, we can do Rex anytime we want, but it's going to be when it's the right time to do it. You, it just just that little tidbit in there, and it, it doesn't tell you anything about the direction, anything about where the story's going, whatever, only you know that there's an aspect there where we can see some of the old troopers, you know, um, and then them honouring um, the clone aspect just by having him there, you know, just by seeing one. You know, I thought that was amazing. Um, I don't know. Also, I, felt I, was, I, I think I'd seen a clip of young Luke in the trailer or something like that, because I tried to avoid as much of that as I could. And I couldn't avoid that. That was everywhere. Um, but as soon as I saw that, I just thought, in back of my mind, I thought, oh, does that mean we're going to get a series where someone's looking after Leia? And then lo and behold, it's one and the same. <laughs> you know, I just thought I just thought it was it was it was a beautiful um, way to bring Obi Wan out of the shadows. You know, um, and I'd say that you know he was con or maybe he is continually, or maybe he was at just this this moment um, doing everything he could to look after those kids, and those kids weren't just being on their own, unwatched or unprotected physically unprotected you know um i love that i loved i love that he had that plane from a new hope that luke was playing with in the old the, the old yeah. bathroom i yeah. love that that's from obi-wan yeah like i saw that and I, i'm like i'm hitting tori my page <laughs> she's like what's that and i'm like that's the plane that's the plane from a new hope it's the plane the plane the plane i was yeah. I'm so stoked <laughs> Uh, there was Harrison. Harrison. What did you think? I was. You guys are gonna hate me. I was not as optimistic. I guess there was. <laughs> I mean, I I liked it, but there are still some parts that I didn't like. Leia's like I like Leia's character so far. I like how she's a lot like how you would imagine she'd be as a kid. My only problem with it is because they wanted to kind of show that character out, even when she's kidnapped. She just got kidnapped. She just almost flipping died and she's still cracking jokes and stuff. I'm like, okay, I feel like a little girl would be a little bit more scared. Like, why is she still cracking jokes and stuff? Forget, this is that a, was kind of weird action, to me. Live action Clone Wars. <laughs> That's all they're doing. It's live action Clone Wars. So there's certain yeah. lines and certain tones. But I know what you yeah. mean. So I, I don't know. I guess I was expecting more of like a serious tone going into it, but it is it's reminded me a lot of like Clone Wars a little bit dialed down a little bit almost cheesy maybe i don't know if cheesy is the right word i um, think cheesy it's more lighthearted. It, works for a it works for a 12 year old you know what i mean there are things right. that we would squint at and you know but those little beats i kind of i, I was like okay those are for the kids <laughs> that's for the kids yeah. okay kids will like that um reva i wasn't super drawn to reva like i was expecting to be she looked really cool in the previews um, but I don't know. I, I, I want to get more into her and see what's driving her, I guess. Because she's really obsessed with Kenobi. I want yeah. to get into why that is and kind of get into her, her passion for that. Because right now she seems a little bit dry to me. Like she has a purpose and she's really driven to that purpose, but I'm I'm missing kind of the reason and the there was, yeah, there was something else. I want to get into it. Interesting about what um the Inquisitor said. Which was yeah. um, about her not her being not a natural inquisitor, something like she wasn't mm -hmm. born into it, or yeah. like she's more she's more she was more inclined to be a force wielder for for the Jedi than than, right. than and that's how I read it. But yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm looking. I, I want to get more into her. 
I want to see mm-hmm. what's really driving her. I agree with Kyle. I kind of sucked that she just killed the Inquisitor out of nowhere because I was, I don't know. We may it seemed like the the previews made such a big deal about the Inquisitor, so it's hard for me to believe that he's already dead, right? Like, I don't gotta, know if he's. got to give me more of him. It's like what? Kyle says, though, man. I, you know, I think there are species. There are species that look like that because also I thought I remember right. there was an outcry because of the shape of his head and it wasn't elongated enough. Um, and I thought, well. You know what? Sometimes they'll they'll take they'll take the hint on that and change it just in time. But the fact that he was in it for so sh- for such a short amount of time, I'm thinking, okay, maybe they didn't bother because of that, or oh, maybe they didn't bother because he's not the same Inquisitor you think he is. Do you know what I mean? It, but that's only a possibility. But yeah, that- um, can we just pull up the fact that Reva pulls up Vader and Anakin? And Obi Wan's face goes just. Oh well, man! And this is the thing. That, <laughs> yeah. This is the thing that got me on that part was like it's, and I think Chris even put it in the chat or um, either Chris or Brody, um, that like it that's a secret. Like nobody really knows. And like you go to the New Hope and all that, and through the clone or through the like Rebels, and nobody knows that that is Anakin. And she just puts it out there like it ain't nothing. Like, oh, you didn't know that the Lord Raider is still here. Anakin is alive. But I, I, it, it, it shocked me. Like, dude, he just told him. I mean, and then in New Hope, when when Obi Wan and and Vader is about to fight in New Hope. Like he knows, but they sense each other, you know, through the force. It's not something like he just walked up, said, Oh, I've I've known you've been Vader for 20 years, you know, like he didn't walk up like that. He felt him and he was like, you know, and it it just I don't know, it just kind of threw me like, why did like I don't know why that was a big deal to put that in there. Like it it just kind of made it like weird. Like my, why is my, why my would you say that? My woman's got a good point on that last one. She says, Garrison, I wonder if Reva was start, started training or was supposed to be trained by Kenobi after Annie took on Ahsoka and she feels a sense of abandonment and that's why she's so obsessed and knows about Annie. Awesome. Well, I'd love to see it. I just felt like from that first episode, she just seemed very flat, basic, and kind of boring. And so yeah, I want to yeah. see more about what's driving her to give her yeah. that. You know, and that, I think that's that's set up. they set up with those with those things. And and also right. when she mentions about Vader and Anakin, this is like, well, who do you guys actually answer to? Who are you guys actually working for? You know, how you know how much do you know or how open is Vader at this point about who he is? Or is it right. so close or not long enough after he becomes Vader for people to lose track of who he is or for those people to know who he is to actually be wiped out? in some shape or form um or that information just becoming lost but that moment just you're right cj when when uh, just ewan's reactions to things spoke volumes more than him saying a lot because i was listening i'm like how many lines are you having this script <laughs> you know I'm looking for it. <laughs> and, and then i'm watching i'm like i'm like but his presence alone and just that mundane job that he had, you know, and did the same thing over and over and cut up a slice of meat for, for his camel thing. What is that thing called? Rue, his, <laughs> you always... Her name is Rue. It's an Eopi. Yeah. <laughs> an Eopi. See? I love Rue. You know, just that. Just what it what it took for or what it's taking to, to bring him back to a point. Because obviously, I think we're going to lose some of that when he goes into his old age and is, and Luke's older, isn't it? Um, but just this this thing that he he can't allow himself to to sink so so far into the shadows because he's he's got to he's got to be able physically, you know, to actually take care of the kids too. And that's my doorbell. <laughs> I'm going to let someone else answer that. <laughs> <laughs> but, Go check, um, we don't but yeah it just kind of just kind of there were loads of setups that's what that's what was getting to me and um i'm glad we had two episodes back to back um but yeah just these little things and you're not quite sure where they're gonna go with each one you know and, and you're right we've uh, this yeah 
she's going to become a pain. I have, I have a feeling she's going to become a pain. Um, but we're going to have to understand her to find out what that is, you know? I, I honestly, honestly feel like Vader's going to kill her. I think he's she's going to say Anakin by accident, and I think that's the end of that whole Anakin name. I think she's well, going to... I'm confused well, how they're letting her get away with so much already. Like, how know, have right? they not, like, tried to arrest her or something? Because she's just doing whatever the fuck she wants at this point. Like, yeah. I'm surprised, how, like, how she's going completely rogue. and how that's Well, the, and that's the thing, though. But you got to understand, as Vader, he, you know, Anakin might like that. You know what I'm saying? Because she's ruthless. You know, she's she's the one that'll go out of the, out of her way. So Vader might like that. That's true. You know, he yeah. might be like, yeah, I like her. She might that, you know, she might be because there's a picture that was that was leaked. And I don't know if it's true, but it was a set thing. But it's uh, it was a set thing with her walking with Vader. And I was like, and she's like right on his right hand. Like she might be the badass one that, you know, that the other ones aren't. The ones that are willing, the one that's willing to go that extra mile to yeah. capture any Jedi or catch. Because you... Like I would, when when she was going so ham on finding Kenobi, is she trying to find him for her him herself to get you know, or is she trying to find him for Vader to get his like you know to get more closer to Vader? Yeah, because uh, it, it's it just seems extreme like that she's this crazy about a promotion like that's so I I, I just want. <laughs> Because that's really what it is. So that's why I'm like, there's got to be something. They wrong. all crave that. They all right. crave you know that. I mean? Even the generals, you know what I mean? They all crave that 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 position. Is it Hux craved it as well? Um, yeah, Hux craved it. Yeah, yeah. But, he was but doing we, anything. He was doing anything to brown nose snow. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And he didn't hide it. He, he was was unashamed about it. Um, but there is that. You made a really good point, Vader is likely to like that and appreciate that um it's whether kind of a worshiping of one wants to go beyond her station that could be com that could cause conflict um between her and vader but you're right because it makes sense with also how lenient they were about the jedi escaping that that little bar it was just like i was expecting a chase and it's like ah, oh, they right. could it's like you know and, and then he says oh there did he call them small fry or something mm -hmm. like that um or something. Yeah. yeah in comparison and then telling her to forget about um K kenobi so maybe maybe that that whole unit had become disillusioned and kind of bored of doing what they're doing to a point i don't know but yeah that there's a big juxtaposition between them going after a random jedi and her going after kenobi well and the fact that kenobi is going into the same town the inquisitors are and the inquisitors don't really have an open eye like how do you not open your eyes and see hey that 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 eop is in that same spot i wonder who owns that eop like, <laughs> what makes you not want to question that you're doing door checks to find <laughs> freaking obi-wan there's a random eop tied up in this pin and you, you is, don't wait for that person to go with it stormtroopers doing doing door checks when when r2 and 3po were hiding in that building of, what was it on Eisley? In a, in a new hope. Yeah. They, oh, let's move on. Oh, that was thorough. That was a thorough check. That so, was very <laughs> thorough. <laughs> what about the chasing when those kidnappers are chasing after Leia? Oh, I, I love I loved that little city. I love that little... Oh, I was talking about like in the woods. Oh, you're talking about Alderaan. Yeah, in Alderaan yeah. when they're oh, doing they're the woods wood? thing. They yeah. could have caught her a lot faster, but I yeah, feel like that just seemed a little bit. I don't know. What I think about that though, no, no, no you have to you want, because that ain't for you. That's for the kids. That's just blame. Yeah, no, that was that was just for that was for the younger viewers, in my personal opinion, so they can think that when things are bad, you can always run and try and yeah. find help. I think that's yeah. what that scene was for. Was for kids to realize, like, hey, if you're in a bad situation, run as fast as you can and be very elusive. You can find help. Which she did, and the motherfucker got shot. He got straight shot. 
<laughs> like, that dude didn't like, yes, even pull I'm out free. a blaster. No. That's my thing. She, she's running help. through the thing screaming, help me, help me, help me. And the dude just sees her and t- takes off running towards her. He don't pull out a blaster. It could be an animal. T- he don't know nothing. He don't pull out anything. He just runs up and gets shot. Wow. <laughs> just shot. Like, you didn't even pull out a gun. I'm what? watching it thinking, like, these have got to be the most incompetent criminals I've ever seen. I think they're I like tripping and like getting. They're running and well, bumping that, their that, heads. That, that stuff. I was like, how good she is and how well she knows the forest. That could have been done <laughs> a lot better, um, to be perfect for, for for my adult viewing. But for a kid, um, it moves fast, you know, and all you're worried about is about making sure that she gets away because you don't want to see, you know, someone your age being caught. You're right, yeah. you know. And I, I also think with that is like, okay, yeah, you could have sped it up, but it wouldn't have been as like okay cool so she knows the forest she knows how to duck and dive and go through these certain parts but at the same time i feel like those guys were enjoying the ch- enjoying the chase in that moment like if you'll see them they're not mad they're not screaming at her they're not saying get back here they're all smiling they're enjoying that so i feel like they were trying to get her tired so she wouldn't put up a bigger fight at the same time right because she's not going to get away it's five against one yeah, like four against and one, and I feel like they were just trying to wear her down. Accidents, weren't they? They were clumsy, and but yeah. yeah, I I I don't know. I enjoyed it. I I am I'm just enjoying the fact that we have a young Leia, and they really they hit it on the nail. Yeah, on that, and I was so impressed. We saw Jimmy Smith <laughs> back as yeah. it was like overall. I I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And when it first started, the first episode, like not so much. The first episode, I could, I knew what was going to happen because I knew that they were going to tell the story. They was going to show the black, the flashbacks and they were going to do all the stuff that they were going to do. I knew they were going to do that. They had to tell the story this time. They didn't tell a story like Book of Boba Fett. It was going to ruin Kenobi. So they knew what they were doing. (laughs) We're going to take long about it either. And they 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 did that they talked about the story and the and it was good it, it showed you what he was really going through and i like that but it was just so slow it was super slow i was sitting there like i was trying not to fall asleep it's early in the morning i'm like oh man come on <laughs> something happened i don't know man that's, that's actually the only thing that i truly did not like at all like just really didn't like was the inquisitor getting killed and in, in both episodes was the inquisitor getting killed and i didn't see one lightsaber battle like not one. I so when Obi Wan pulls out in the second one, he pulls out his lightsaber and he's looking at it, and she's like starting to throw the crates around. I thought he was gonna light it and they was gonna go through a little lightsaber battle. I was so excited. We haven't seen a good lightsaber battle in a while, and I was like, "Oh, they're gonna do it! They're gonna do it!" There. And then it never happened. I was like, "Damn, that sucked." But overall, I like I like both of the episodes. One was kind of slow, but I knew it was gonna be. I told everybody yeah. to. I, I told I everybody that from the beginning. The of one and so i knew that that was going to happen i tried to build up everybody's anticipation you know on that happening because i knew it was going to happen i knew it and another thing did y'all watch the credits any of y'all watch the credits like all of it yeah, yeah it, like watch all the credits. you know um john farrow had nothing to do with these episodes at all he's not even credited at uh, all yeah. in these episodes dave was Dave was just got Dave. It said shout out to Dave Filoni or uh, special thanks to Dave Filoni, but John Favreau had nothing to do with these two episodes. No, I, I noticed I, the layout was very cinematic. It was, it was. Unlike unlike the other ones, I, that's what I picked up on um, was the credits. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It, there's this. What was it you were just saying? Because there was something in there. There was. Um, you like the like the pace of of it and so, yeah, oh I, listen, I listen. Like best best lightsaber battle ever is between Euron and um Hayden right so i'm i'm expecting when they meet we'll get a little taste of a little taste of that but i think they still want to build up to that because even with the um the prequels it felt like they were building up to that as soon as you got through was it the second the second movie um, into the third, they'd already established the height, the age, the capabilities, and then we had that epic fight scene with the sabers. Um, but I think they're building up. I can see that this build. I don't know what they're building up to because there's just so much going on. 
you know, um, in terms of teasing for well, bounty hunters, they're after the kids twenty four seven. Um, he's got to he's got to find the force. He's got to be be um, Kenobi again. You know, um, that whole thing at the beginning with him saying, "No, I don't want to." No, um, uh, you, might, you must be mistaken. Just buried the lightsabers in the sand or whatever. Very unforgiven, Clint Eastwood. You know, it's all that Western stuff, and you don't want to wake the sleeping dragon. You know, um, and that's where, you know, when he goes back into the town and he sees that body hanging there or whatever, you know the clock is ticking. He is slowly going to have to be pulled back in, but we don't know how, you know, um, until the little, little what child. Did we, what did we think of uh, Haje, the fake Jedi? Chris is asking. I thought, that was, I thought, I thought he was, that was funny. funny as hell. <laughs> yeah, I, I liked him at the beginning, but... What he's talking about with his decision making, yeah, it did seem a little bit weird. Um, just kind of like random. I mean, I feel like it could have easily been explained like with a quick scene, but it did feel a little bit weird. Tori I, thought it, I thought it was good, other than you know, I thought him being the fake Jedi and using the Magnus and stuff, and Obi Wan's just watching, like, <laughs> this dude's a fake. This dude, yeah, I like that. he I was like just that. looking at him. He was like looking around the corner. He was almost, you could just see him shaking his head, like, oh, this dude is terrible. <laughs> this dude. No, I definitely like that part. I, especially because, like, you fast forward to, like, New Hope, and the Jedi are very much viewed as, like, this weird, mystical, like, weird thing, weird religion. Like from Han Solo's perspective, and so I like how it's like it's showing that that transition from like a very real thing to like this weird hocus pocus fantasy. Yeah, thing. revered, and it's yeah, been. And so I, I liked that. I liked how it's kind of showing people, um, like taking something and like twisting it, and that's what's creating all those weird perceptions of them. And uh, you so I, I actually like, really liked that. Most of them probably have never even seen a Jedi. It's just right, hearing right. stories of one. You know, and then he comes face to face with one. Oh, God, goosebumps. You know, he comes face to face yeah. with, as if I couldn't face to face with Obi-Wan. But it's it's that moment, and it's just like almost, almost, um, I think he felt more, I'd like to feel that he felt more ashamed that a Jedi had, had, had cottoned on to his act than anybody else. Do you know what I mean? Uh, almost, almost to that extent where, you know, that's why he kind of makes that, does that little 360 in terms of, well, what, I, what I'm really about. Yeah, I need the credits. Credits are great. <laughs> and he's honest, man. Credits, yeah, credits are great to buy a lot of things. But, you know, um, trying to help Obi-Wan out was, was pretty cool. But his character, I'm glad he didn't die. I thought, I thought Reva was going to get it. I think I'm he's. Glad. I think he's going to be in more episodes. I think he's going to go and. I think he's going to be a little bit more involved with Kenobi. I think he's going to try and tell. Try and tell them or tell Obi Wan like, "Hey, man, we need you more than ever. We need we need the Jedi. We need you. You're Obi Wan Kenobi. Like, how does he know that that's his name when he's like, I'm going to help you, Obi Wan. Other than the bounty, other than the bounty yeah. on his wrist." Because it probably says it on the bounty. It probably says it on the bounty. But for him, he probably doesn't know who Obi Wan is. Only that it's a Jedi. Well, or if he does, yeah. he's it's it's like that's the great general Obi Wan Kenobi from the clone. Right, right, yeah. And I I got confronted by him. He held me at blaster point. Like what? <laughs> yeah. Tori <laughs> pulls up something here. She said, I like the hesita hesitation in Kenobi during that scene. It furthers the view of his struggle becoming one with the Force again. And yeah. he is ready to light and fight again. Then she mentions Annie. Like, you, we knew. Like, he held that light. I'm going to go back to that. He, he he was holding that. He was ready to light it and ready to, you know, get his hands dirty. And when she said, Lord Vader, Anakin Skywalker, you just saw his hands loosen up a little bit. And you saw the... Oh. I don't, I don't know if I could do this. I don't, I, was I don't I was need him coming out here. Yeah. I don't, I don't need him coming after me. I, I'm trying to protect Luke and Leia. I'm trying to do everything I can to keep them in the shadows. And if I don't think he knew he was alive. Yeah. Well, you know, there's that on top of everything you just said. On top of that, he's got all of these layers coming through thinking, I thought he was dead. Now I've got to protect these people. How am I going to protect? You can see all of that. Um, It'd be interesting to see where he goes with the fuel of that, but um, absolutely right. Absolutely. That moment, that moment where 
up until then, he felt like he possibly had a choice how much to get involved, you know? Um, now he's, he's, he's got zero, he's got zero choices in terms of what he's going to need to do to protect those kids. I just, I love seeing Jimmy Smith. I yeah. thought that was awesome. I'm going to pull that up because you said his name. And I met him I on Rogue Jimmy I on and One and I, I, could, I wanted to fan out. I wanted to fan out, but I was just, I had to play it really, really cool because I remember him from L.A. Law, man. <laughs> L.A. Law, that, he was in you know? Sons of Anarchy. I loved him in Sons of oh, Anarchy. And yeah. He's Bail Organa, and the fact that he yeah. came back and he understands Leia because Leia is Padme and Anakin, and he knew Anakin and he knew Padme. And yeah. when he's looking at Leia, explaining to her, like, you know, I'm not mad at you, I'm, I'm trusting, and like, mom's the hard ass in this situation. <laughs> mom's like, you have to apologize. And Jimmy, Jimmy's role is Bail, he's like, you don't honestly, I ain't gonna tell you what to do, you should do it just to keep, you know, just to save face, but. You ain't wrong. Yeah. You will always be an Organa. I don't yeah. care if we adopted you. You are an Organa. That was beautiful. That was that beautiful. Was, oh, that was so yeah. touching. It was just a moment of thank you, Jimmy, for bringing us that live action moment. I would yeah. honestly, I would die if we could ever get him on a show just oh. to talk to him about that experience. Yeah. But he doesn't really have social media. So, no, yeah, there, there are a few people out there who, who don't. They just hide and and do their thing and, and don't really get on board. Um, but yeah, you know, you, it's worth a shot. You could always send it to his agent or publicist or something like that. Just know. to get him on to talk to him about this experience after Kenobi's over, because who says that that's the end of his role, but who says that it is at the same time, but I would love to just get that first hot take of Leia. Like, how did you feel about looking at that little girl and calling her Leia? That was just, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still, I'm just like mesmerized by that <laughs> moment in that with him and that little girl playing Leia. It was just amazing. It was just a whole nother level of like satisfaction of a character that we, we were afraid to see in live action other than Carrie Fisher. Right. And the fact well, that I this didn't little think girl. That I, I honestly didn't think that they was going to find somebody that could play her part that well, even as a kid. I just didn't think that she could be recast, even as a child, that could play that part and really capture Leia the way Leia was. And they did it. That little girl is excellent. She played that part per, like was so good. Now, there was some times that it was like, like Garrison said, it was like, you're not scared. But she's like, dude, my dad is the shit, man. My dad is about to send an army to kill this whole place if y'all don't turn me over. And the dude was like, ain't no one coming. And she's like, yeah, okay, watch. Somebody's coming. She already knew that she was getting rescued. Like, she is Princess Leia Organa. You know, she's she, she had that attitude. And she has her mother's attitude. She really did yeah. play that I'm fearless like Padme. And Obi Wan says that, so that 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 captivated me right there. I'm like, this little girl is excellent. Like, she is a good little actor for being so young and be able to to articulate the way that she did was yeah. phenomenal. She did a great job. At the same time, though, part of me is almost worried they might have like portrayed Leia too well, if that makes sense. Like, with how Leia is acting, why is Obi Wan? If I was Obi Wan, be like. F the boy, this girl's the Jedi. <laughs> well, how, right? Am I the only one that's like, dude, the well, boy, he's just flying <laughs> Do we get a moment? But do we get a moment with Obi-Wan and Bell? Like, is she showing force abilities? Maybe we might get that moment where Bell's like, no, because he's yeah, afraid. She is. She's well, that's the thing. Like, well, Bell knows that Bell knows that there's gonna be a time where they're gonna need the Jedi to come back. Bell's not gonna want to shove his only daughter that he loves so much into that moment. He wants her in the Senate. Like he said, that's the point. You'll be a great Senator. Then he doesn't want her to become a Jedi. He doesn't want that. Right. So if Obi-Wan asks him in like, let's say in the show, if she's showing any abilities, I could see Bale like, no, she's not. She hasn't shown a single thing. And Obi-Wan's going to know yeah. better. No, Obi-Wan's going to Obi know better. I think Obi-Wan can already tell. Like Obi-Wan's going to know better. He can already tell. Well, I think she read into be really it. good is if somehow they show on screen the fact that all right the kid the boy's going to be the jedi this girl her skills need to be put 
to leadership, right? Because the Jedi, he can fight and he can do stuff, but she's born to be a leader. And so she'll use her Jedi thing, instincts to be This a thing leader. about Luke being the age that he is and and um, running off behind his dad's back when his dad's not looking to jump onto the front port archway of the of the little place where they live and be a starfighter that just looked like young anakin oh man so, and as pod well, racing his little I, heart yeah, out for a kid in the desert just instinctively there is there are traits we're seeing hints and traits you know um whether those hints and traits are realized by their parents compared to what kenobi might be seeing kenobi might be happy that it's all it's all being played down and when he says, as the boy show, if he asks if the boy has any, shown any traits, maybe un Uncle, um, is it Uncle Owen hasn't yeah. seen any or wouldn't even notice the boy hasn't shown any traits. Well, I think, I think with that, though, like in the town where the, when the, the Inquisitor has the lightsaber to Owen's face and she's like, I will kill you and your family if you if the Jedi doesn't come out now. I want the Jedi. And Owen played it so damn tough. I have to give him that. Like, I'm sorry, you're standing there with a red hot blade and you can feel that heat and it's right there. And you're like, no, I ain't backing down. I'll die right here for it. And it's not because of Obi-Wan. Like he tells Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan walks up, thank you. And that wasn't for you. Like, oh, and yeah, that was. You don't need to lie, bro. Like you you, you know well, there's going to be a time where Luke's going to But then, but then also he knows, he knows who, the kid's, um, who the kid's father is. Yeah. You know, um, and being privy to that kind of secret you know, you're not gonna put. You're not gonna have. You're not gonna put your your family's life on the line. You know, um, without some kind of insurance. And no matter what he says to Kenobi, however he feels about Kenobi, he'll be grateful silently if Kenobi has to cover his back or cover his family's back. But he'll never thank Obi Wan um, publicly. You know, I think it was a lot that. He was he's really trying to get like, all right, I'm like because he had just told Kenobi about leave the boy alone, mm. you know, leave leave my family alone. And I think it was like he the reason he didn't say anything because he was kind of like showing Obi-Wan. I got this. You need to leave us the hell alone, man. You need yeah. to stop worrying about training yeah. him. You didn't do a good job with his father. Not, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so leave us alone. And that was kind of a throw in the face like I got this. You know, I got this. I thought he was going to snitch on him. I thought it was going to be a dope fight scene right there. Like he was going to snitch on Kenobi, but he doesn't. He well, I think it. it was more or less to throw it in <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi's face. Like, I got this. I don't need to tell on you. I don't need to do anything. I got my family. Leave us the hell alone. That was kind of the, what I got. And Chris brought up a, a, a good point that I kind of wanted to discuss, too, was he tries to speak to Qui-Gon. He called Kenobi calls out in the cave to, to Qui-Gon. And is, you guys think that that's a confirmation that Liam Neeson might be in it later on? Do you think he's like, he has it's, to pop up as a force? I don't think it's the first time he's done that. The way that it's played, it's not like it's, the, it's like the first time he's done that. So maybe it's something that will tr trickle through. I'd like to hope that it does trickle through. Um, but it didn't sound like that was the first time he was yelling out, calling out, sorry, calling out to... Um, to Qui-Gon and, and if Qui-Gon hadn't heard because he said, yeah, now I could really do with you by my side or something at some point, didn't he? Um, I, I think we'll see. I think we'll see him. I think Liam Neeson oh, yeah. was just mm -hmm. doing a ploy. Like I said, when he pulled that article saying, oh, I'll only do movies. Bullcrap. I don't believe you. You were on Saturday Night Live. You were on Clone Wars. You've made guest appearances on other TV shows. Don't you lie to me. Tell me you're not an Obi-Wan. Don't you lie to me. Don't you lie to me. And we need, true, yeah, we need like, you more than ever, Liam Neeson. You're our only hope. Without, well, yeah, with, especially after episode three, how the ending, Yoda's like, and they even include that in the recap. Did you guys watch the recap? Yeah, that was beautiful. The recap, they even included that Yoda said, Talk to your old master, Qui Gon, all that stuff. Yeah. There's no, why would you include that in the recap if you weren't gonna at least touch on it and at least yeah. get him to talk to Qui Gon? So he, he, I, I just don't see him or hear him. Either which way. As long as we hear him. Yeah. I don't care hear about him seeing him, see him. As long as somehow. we hear him. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's got to be in it at least somehow, and I don't see a way around that. 
Yeah. Without without Honestly, him. I think that I might not. We might not see him come to 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 um, Obi Wan. You know, we might see him trying to talk to Anakin, trying to talk to Vader, trying to keep that. Uh, we might get that. That's a possible. That, uh, that's a possibility, but I don't know how the Force works in that regard. You know, like, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if um, uh, anyone from the light side appears to, to try and talk to somebody on the dark side because they've already made their commitments. You know, so they, their ears already belong to somebody. I don't know if they're gonna if that's a thing. I don't know if that will be explained or that's to be explored. But it's a it's a possibility. Um, I, I, I would love it. I would yeah, lose my talk mind. To Yoda, so. In Reb in the Clone Wars, Bane talks to Yoda, so that's a dark side force ghost talking to a light side force or a oh, light side. Who, user. Oh, who did Yoda talk to? Bane. Bane. In, Clone, oh, in the Clone Wars, Yoda was doing those independent missions to find himself to be one with the Force. Oh Bane yes. Appears. Oh. So if I a could dark see... side, if Sorry. a dark side user can talk to a light side user, a dark then, side yeah. force ghost can talk to a light side force yeah. ghost. I don't see why a light side force ghost couldn't talk to a dark side force ghost. That's that's a good point. That's a very good point. <laughs> I could I could see Qui Gon going to Annie and being like, "This isn't you," like that kind of moment, and then finally it clicks in Qui Gon that it, it's he's gone. He can't try and get to Vader or Anakin, so mm-hmm. he finally we get that moment. I feel like it's gonna be the last episode. You'll hear Liam Neeson say Obi Wan. And that's all we'll freaking get. I, I swear Disney's going to do this to us. They'll give us that <laughs> Obi-Wan, and then it drops. Uh, and it's the end of the series. And I'm going to be dead. Yeah, Kenobi, Kenobi will be lying there. His eyes are closed. They're open. His eyes open. But, and then, then that's it. But I'd actually, like, yeah, it'd be frustrating, but I'd at least be okay with it. Well, that would also, that could then also it could lead take into you because... from, like, it will, it could huh. further lead, like, the Obi-Wan we're seeing now to the Obi-Wan we see in A New Hope. They're not the same Obi-Wan. So that Qui Gon no. speaking Kenobi at the end could be like the last thing. Like, all right, this is what kind of completes that transformation to the Obi Wan we're going going to well, see. Well, also, that Qui Gon um, possibility of trying to get hold of, uh, trying to speak to Anakin. You know, um, does it sound? It, I'm thinking it through, and it and it sounds plausible from the point of view that Anakin has got nobody in his ear. The Emperor's oh. gone, right? Yeah, and I think that's kind of how it how it keeps him, you know, kind of maybe creates that that anchor to the to the light to the love, because he don't know about his kids, so he don't have nothing to love there. He don't have nothing. Padme's dead, so he's full out. Why why would he have a little bit of good in him? You know what I'm saying? Unless he has somebody in his ear telling him, "You can change. You can be better. You can go back to the light." That would just be annoying as hell, though. I'm trying to be a bad guy, Qui Gon. Quit it. You just got Qui Gon. You're Anakin Skywalker, not Lord of Vader. Shut up! You're like you're like having an internal conversation with yourself practically, and you're just going nuts. That's why Vader goes into his rages. This is why Vader chokes people out and stabs people with lightsabers because Qui Gon's telling him that he's good. He just goes into like a temper tantrum and just stab. No, I'm not. Watch this. I can kill this guy. You're like, <laughs> Skipping through the hall, hitting people with lightsabers so Qui Gon can get out of his ear. Like, jeez. That would no. be hilarious. Then. But you and you and you and had pulled up that he doesn't. He would love to come back and do more of this role because there still is eight years after this. He would love to do another portion of this. Like he talked about this. He even said it during celebration. I don't that, remember. I don't remember. I was listening to another Star Wars podcast. It might have been Rebel Force Radio or, or or the I can't remember which one it was listened to. I listened to several of them. But I was listening to one and they brought up a very good point. And I was like, they almost set it up like this. We're gonna put out the first series, we're gonna do the first six things, and we're gonna see how the fans react to it. Because Boba Fett Boba Fett didn't get the biggest reaction, didn't get the best reaction that they wanted. And I think that they're kind of setting it up like, let's see what the reaction is. And if the reaction is good enough, then we'll do a season two or season three because of the simple point. Like you said, there's eight years in between the time span that they're at. Now they might do a flash forward or, you know, a jump forward, you know, five years later or whatever type thing. But I think that they're they're setting it up just to, to have a season two and a season three maybe 
but it's all depending on the fans because I've, all, I've already watched several YouTube videos and people are like, this is bullshit. I hated it. Like, I'm like, dude, what, what, what? I told y'all that it was going to be like this. I told everybody, I put it on Instagram, put on, you know what I'm saying? TikTok. This is going to start off slow. And it did start off slow. It was supposed to, they told the story this time. They actually told you what was going on. They gave you the flashbacks at the beginning, gave you the flashbacks in the dream. They led you up. They told you what's going on. They gave you all the information that you needed. You can't do that in something that's just action the whole time. You can't tell a story. I knew it was going to start slow. I've been saying it. It's going to start slow. And it did. For these first two episodes, it started very slow. It introduced Leia because we knew Leia was going to come in because they already casted a boy and a girl to play the, uh, to play Luke and Leia. We knew that they that they were both going to be there. A lot of the information we already knew because they gave us that information. And then they just filled in them little holes and made it linear so we know exactly what's going on. And I thought that I thought that they did an excellent job at it. Yes, it was slow. It wasn't the most exciting thing in the world to watch, but the story was there. And now, from what they go from this point forward, as they build on that story, it's just going to get better. That's all there is to it. It's just going to. Yeah. I Deborah Chow is too good of a director to to allow this. This is not multiple directors directing this. Deborah Chow directs the whole series, so she is she is following the storyline. She is. She's not gonna let it be just crap. She's she's not gonna let it do that. And, that would and also, also it's gonna be a natural process for all these people that we're being introduced to through individual um, episodes, individual shows, that they are all going to cross over. You're gonna see people appearing in other people's shows because that is the nature of the Clone Wars. That's the nature of the Rebels. You know, um uh there were I I hope. Oh, I'd like to see. I don't know if they're going to do it. I don't know what they're doing, right? But they'll all tie back into the Force. It'll all tie back into those uh, those poignant characters that, that we know and love. But um, for the establishing things like this, that's what I'm saying about seeing the, um, uh, the clone trooper. You know, that's just a little snippet of what you of what they're able to do, and what we're probably going to see somewhere down the line, whether it's in Kenobi or somebody else's. But these people that cross over, you know, the one thing I I, I'm, I need you guys to explain to me is like um, this moment right now that's taking place with Kenobi. Yeah, um, what? timeline is this because i got lost watching boba it's after know? revenge of the sith it's 10 years after revenge of the sith and it's eight years before a new hope so okay right. so who else fits into that timeline does boba fit into that mando uh, who fits into this timeline and or um, rebels ahsoka right. ahsoka um, can fit into this okay uh ahsoka's kind of a little bit further ahead i guess she could be in there because Ahsoka in in like the Bad Batch and Mandalorian are all set after Revenge of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. So Return of the Jedi. Well, no, 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 yeah, Return, no, not yeah, re, no, well, not even Return of the Jedi because it's after Revenge, Revenge of the, of the Sith. Sith or Return of the Jedi. Mandalorian <laughs> is five years after Mandalorian is five years after Revenge of the Sith. No, Return. Uh, Mandalorian is five years after the Return of the Jedi. And then no, because 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 they got Ahsoka in there, and Ahsoka's after um is part the of, fall of the fall of the empire has already happened. Remember, because everything in the Mandalorian is just those are just imperial cells. They're that's the empire is gone. The galactic the new galactic republic is being built. That's why Luke Skywalker was there. That's why Cara Dune the shock. But you got okay. A no, but think about this. Trooper. Think about this. Okay. So, Book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian is set after Revenge of uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Because right. Luke is already a Jedi. Yeah. Right. Um, That's what I'm Ahsoka comes back, but she's right. looking for um, she's looking for Thrawn. So we know that's after Rebels. So Rebels is after Revenge of the Sith, or after or after Return of the Jedi. So all of this, like this time period, is is after Revenge of the Sith. Everything else is really except for the bad the bad batch. Because the Bad Batch is after, right. Is right after. No, that's after Return of the Jet. No, it's right after uh, Revenge of the yeah, Sith because Revenge the Emperor. So, so, so some of the things Batman. could go into could go into play. Like Rex could be in any of them because he was after both of them. Um, 
I don't know. It, it, it would be like the Mandalorian. I guess he could show up and maybe Kenobi says something to him, and that's what kind of changes his heart. So when he finds Baby Yoda, because you got to understand it's only like, what, maybe two years, three years, four years, maybe five years that happened between New Hope and uh, Return of the Jedi. So it's not like these people would be dead. So they could pop up. Um, Boba Fett is set. Well, that's kind of hard, yeah, because Boba Fett is set. He comes out of Sarlacc Pit, so Boba Fett is set <laughs> after the Revenge of the uh, Return of the Jedi. So it could be, I mean, it. they could be in it. We know Boba Fett's around at this time. Yeah, because he's the notorious Boba Fett at this point. But Oh, right. Okay. I don't know. It's kind of hard to see. I think it's going to be newer characters. I think they're going to be right. more of the more the Inquisitors because there's the eleven Inquisitors in total. I think this is the first live action we've seen of, of Inquisitors too, right? Yep, this is the first yeah. live action. The only yeah. other time we've seen any Inquisitors was in Rebels. Right. Um, I don't know. There's a, I, there's a whole lot of stuff that could that, that, that they could do, but they could also bring in other characters. We could see uh, Han and Chewie. This is right about the time that Han and Han and Chewie are, get, are meeting up with each other in Solo, so we could see that. Andor definitely because Rebel Cells and stuff. That that's all happens before New Hope. Um. So we. Could I, see I see. Some I see. I see Andor coming in first. Like if we were to see anybody, I see Cassie and Andor and Mon Mothma and all that. Even if it's just a Bail Organa, like if we get a, a snippet of Bail Organa with Leia mm -hmm. and he's talking to Mon Mothma and Cassie and saying, Cassie, I need you to do this for us kind of stuff. Right. I, that's what I can see. I don't okay. see Obi-Wan running into a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I hope we get Carrie Jones's uh, Black Chrysanthemum moment that we saw in the comics. Right. I would Ooh, love to see cool. that. I think I think that they might introduce Han and Chewie for like they're in the cantina or something like that. Obi Wan has to go mind. to a cantina. Oh, so the which prequel movie was it? And I don't know if you guys know. I hope you guys know. Um, there was one I was watching. Is it the um the second one? Um, Attack of the Clones. And I think I was sitting there at one point with my neighbor's kid, and he was only five, and we were watching um the ships arrive on. Naboo, I think, a spaceport when um, Anakin and Padme are going to be leaving to go away. Yeah. Um, the ship flies in, and this kid sat next to me and says, Oh, look, there's the Millennium Falcon. I'm like, No, 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 that's a new hope. That's a... And I had to rewind it, and there was a, a what's it? What a Corellian YT 1300. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry, that's... <laughs> Bless you, brother. <laughs> Corellian <laughs> YT 1300 light freighter. You know, and they're obviously they're probably they're probably common, but whether Han was flying, I don't know, or Orlando, I don't know. But, well, we um, know that he meets Han and 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 Chewie meet each other up, meet meet each other right before New Hope. So at some point, I mean, and the timeline is kind of strange. A little, well, it's not really that strange because it's like right before New Hope. So I think that. It would have to be a little bit ahead of time for, but you know, you have Andor, so I don't know if Han mm -hmm. and Chewie would so much be a thing, or maybe you would see one of them individually. Right. I think Han is still pretty young, but we don't know if he's already on Tatooine. We don't know. We know that he's left the. Uh, he he's already left, and he's already left the Empire by about ten years in. Maybe maybe that might be a little, but we could see him in in maybe empire uniform or something like that a young right. han solo in the empire uniform because at this point i still think he's part of the empire he might be out by now chris pulls right. up a good point could we see cal kestis from fallen order because fallen order takes place five years after return revenge of the sith i would love to see cal kestis mm. i would love to see uh cameron i think his first name is cameron i believe i would love to see him in this i think i mean he plays great voice actor in motion cap, but I would love to see him in a live action role as a Jedi. Just even if you just have a, a moment where Obi-Wan runs into him and tells him stay hidden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if they just keep kidnapping princess Leia over and over again during the whole series. And then they take her to Tatooine and she meets her brother and they're like all like 
huggy and kissy about 14 years old. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Because I knew the, how easy it was to kidnap her out of a, like right next to a palace. You know, they, they, these people are, there's like no guards nowhere. But here's was, the thing. <laughs> they were kidnapping the child. The, um, the choice to kidnap the children, it seemed like they don't know who the children actually are, but they're kidnapping the children to draw Obi Wan out. You know, um, that's it's a, it's a, it's a little bit it's a little bit close in terms of um, they're just using that for leverage and 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 luckily they don't know who the kids actually are. Do you know? Other because otherwise Vader would know and and so on and so forth. Um, Only thing well, that they I, knew and what is explained in the story was that they knew that um, that. Obi Wan and Bell Organa had served together. Right. Um, and Riva had noticed that they had had many of transitions. Yeah, she between. says it in the, she says right. it in episode two that she seen um that she seen the archives that they served to get together in the Clone War. So right. that that's why they went after her. Right. What is Chris right. talking about, Kyle? This is not the Jamie and Chrissy Lancaster story. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> look it up. You gotta, you gotta look it up because I can spend a whole podcast talking about this. But I just I don't know. There, there are so many different possibilities of things that they can do at this point. I mean, th they're in a time period that we know nothing of. You know, we just know from Revenge of the Sith to um, A New Hope. There's just an 18 year span in there and they can do anything that they want to within this 18 year span or now eight year span because they started it when they were 10. But they could do anything at this point for the next eight years of what happens. And that's what's exciting because it's like, dude, they can take this 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 first series and they they can make it and then, you know, and it could just be finished or they can just expand it out it's just depending on how the writers wrote it and how deborah child wants to direct it and how they want to do it because they can lead us like in, they can literally skip you know the next episode could be three years later or the next episode could yeah, be yeah. five years later oh, we don't know how they're gonna do it hopefully they left it to where they could come in and fill in more if they wanted to show some of the different things i think that that would be great overall I want to get y'all's overall. What do you guys think of the first two? If you was to rate the first two episodes, what would you rate them as? Let's give it to the hard critic up here in the corner. <laughs> Garrison, I want to hear it. You want me to go first? Yeah, <laughs> you always go last. I want you to go first. You're always the harshest one out of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> right. I want to have something to argue against. Yeah, this I time. want to argue with you if I have four, to. Five. <laughs> five? You said a four or a five? No, I said five. Why, did you not listen to anything that I told y'all Yo, in the beginning me, about it being slow? You me, can't. Me and Kyle just you, did you listen to me when I said at the beginning? It. The slow part is what I liked about it. I told you I liked it slow. The slowness I was not my problem. This from you. Oh, out of anybody God. in the crew, I expect this from you. And I'm seriously, and I'm seriously looking at this as somebody. I'm looking at CGI. I'm looking at everything. You know the score. Which we didn't even talk about that. The score on that was okay, Garrison. Garrison, clarify. Clarify. Okay, the slow Kyle. The slowness was not my problem. I was fine with the slowness. I, I think the slowness actually played to the monotony and the depression that Obi Wan would be experiencing. So I liked the slowness of it. The part that threw me off was the cheesiness. Um, I felt like there was a lot of stuff that played to the kids part and I'm an adult. Sorry, that didn't really play for me. Um, I didn't, wasn't a big fan of the Inquisitors and how unorganized it all was and how she was just kind of being rogue and they were just kind of letting her be rogue. Um, are you just mad because your boy from Fast and the Furious didn't look cool? Yeah, because no. he did look like a geek. That that was they should have got a different actor to play him. He's not that that was not convincing to me at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just felt like the whole thing was just kind of cheesy. Um, the chase scenes after Leia that was just ridiculous. Um, 
just how Leia acted during certain parts. I feel like, okay, are you not – like you just got kidnapped. You are you guys are running for your flipping lives and you're still cracking jokes. Um, yeah, just stuff like that. <sighs> Fine. I think I think that's fair enough, and and also I think it's a good place to start from, especially if it's a five, even if it's lower than that, you know, because the story has to grow, mm. you know, um, and it has to build and it has to take you somewhere. There has to be that 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 journey towards that um, that big goal, that big finish, um, or finale. Um, yeah, you know, I think it's fair enough. I think it's fair enough um, at this stage. Yeah, you know, um, for me, it's 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 up it's up there. I, I spoke to some kid like while I was online gaming a while ago, and and some kid was on there and he was complaining about the, the movies, you know. And uh, and when I say kid, he must have been about fourteen or or something like that. And um, I'm not sure what his first experience was with the Star Wars movie. Um, but at 14 and not having seen that many Star Wars films to be quoting what everybody's been complaining about with the movies, but all he's covering it with is, oh no, that was just trash, that was just trash, and, you know, and it's just like, well, that trash is still canon, you know, it's mm-hmm. got to learn to, learn to ride that tide. Um, so if, so for someone like yourself who knows Star Wars and has been following it, um, we all have certain things that fit into our taste. We want to see how certain things flow, you know, or get to certain things sooner or whatever. But it, it, they can't just rock like that, and we know that. So we know that these slow builds will enhance what we've seen. Like, what was I watching? I was watching something. I think it was one of the, um, like, even before the, Book of Boba, even before the Book of Boba Fett finished, I would have gone back to watch it from the start, to get back to the middle of the, of the series, just to get... To, pull back into that track um but yeah i, I guess for me, for me it's it's a, it's an eight because half of you know most of those points is just because in my heart's there <laughs> you know and i know that journey so um and uh yeah it doesn't have to do too much to, to get up to a 10 for me um we'll see if it gets there it probably will but yeah i'm, I'm quite high cj I'm you write, you write yours down. <laughs> no, I was I was looking at some things real fast. Okay. But honestly, I'm gonna give episode one a six. Like I said, the, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> That's like I, level five, and you just hold on. Just no, started. you rated both episodes as a five. I thought he was asking overall. No, I'm going to write so them individually. Five. You know what? Fight me, Garrison. Let's go. <laughs> no, I'm going to give episode five, uh, episode one a six. I loved the motion. I loved the score. I loved how Obi-Wan kind of just isolated himself. But at the same time, it was – it just – I got to give Garrison the credit on the, the, the Inquisitor portion of it. It was just to – Meh. It was like that's not inquisitors work together. They 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 are brothers and sisters. They want to hunt the Jedi and be Jedi killers. They want to make the Emperor and Vader and proud, and they don't want to fail them. And it, it just didn't seem like none of the inquisitors had that attitude, except for the Grand Inquisitor and obviously the one that Sung Kang played. Other than that. I did the, the those uh, just didn't really have much to it with the inquisitors. Do you feel with with the inquisitors that this isn't their first day? Everything you know about the inquisitors is what we've seen through the rebels or, or clone wars or whatever. Um, I don't expect the, the is it the grand grand inquisitor? I don't expect him to to lose much much pace. But um, I don't know. I felt. My brain justified them kind of being blasé about the, the Jedi who escaped. It's like, oh, we'll get him anyway. But then when they refer to him as just small fry and forget about Kenobi, what, I don't know if it's like they're just, it seemed like they were following a mandate, whether their hearts were in it or not, you know. But the difference between, like you're saying with the family, I think that's absolutely true. And I think that's why Reva stands out. 
And that's, 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 that's completely how I feel. Because like I said, when you watch them in rebels, they're a team when one, yeah. and, and in Jedi fallen order, when one brother gets hurt, the other inquisitors come in to help. And it's just, yeah. like, it was yeah. so disorganized with that. And uh, like you said, Reva does stand out, Yeah, but that's my future like, ex-wife. Y'all, y'all better quit talking about my future ex-wife. <laughs> again. You got another one. Yeah. <laughs> Damn bro. That's Man, four. She's hard. Like I was like she like she made the the she was the best part of the whole episode to me both of them. I liked her I liked her story I just she, don't she find just, her as an inquisitor. She's she's dope. She just like that's the type of woman that you want to want to have your back right there. She ain't gonna take no shit. She's killing everybody. Yeah, um, that made her even more hot to me. That is just, babe, back off. <laughs> Tori's like I'll fight you. <laughs> She's dope. But see, and Tori and I are in the same same boat on this. I, I give episode one a six. It could be a six and a half, seven, if they would have had the Inquisitor, Inquisitors more organized and more like... They were intimidating. Don't get me wrong. The Grand Inquisitor was... When he came down, it was like, oh, shit. I liked him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. Like, that was great. Episode two, I have to give it an eight. I loved the the young actress that portrayed leia it gave me such a nostalgic feel like it got me in my emotions of like loving carrie fisher as princess leia and that little girl literally embodied that like if you had carrie fisher as a 10 year old that would be carrie fisher right there that is carrie fisher playing leia at 10 years old and she embodied the hell out of that and that honestly if you can give that little girl an award i would give it to her because that that killed me just just her wittiness her the, like she was getting belittled by her like her cousins and she turned around and instead of crying and running to mommy yeah. and daddy, she <laughs> turned around and fired right back at him and made him question every single thing about himself and then then some and yeah the fact that she made obi-wan feel bad about not using the force and be like you're a jedi you have to you know you can't be a jedi then if you're not using the force you, you have to be a jedi if you, you have a lightsaber yeah. kind of like that that's, moment. That's, a, that's a sass of a kid. You know what I mean? That, that, that worked for me. Yeah. And I loved every second of that. And that's why I'm giving that one an eight. It gave us that up and down and the score, the, I didn't like the parkour scene as much. Cause like, she's a fucking former Jedi Sith, like force jump. Like just use what's what the bar for? Like you ain't finished. You ain't finished. You are not finished. But you gotta understand too. She just hopping from rooftop to rooftop. She does use the force when she pushes the thing down to run across it. The the parkour didn't bother me too much because like people keep saying, oh, they're they're comparing her to like the Jedi, like in in Phantom Menace. But you also gotta understand like those were like full on Jedi, like Qui Gon and Obi Wan were like Jedi. She's an Inquisitor, and Inquisitor weren't, like, insanely strong with the Force, right? Their job was to hunt down Jedi. Their job wasn't to be Sith Lords. Mm -hmm. So I kind of liked how she wasn't, like, floating around super OP Sith, but, like, using athletic ability and a little bit of Force to enhance that athleticism. Oh, yeah. So I actually kind of like that side of it. Practical, yeah. And I I, I said, I just her attitude towards Kenobi and how she can get, like, that scene, we know for a fact that scene was so genuine when she's she obviously kills the inquisitor or not kills the inquisitor yet because he hasn't came in but the fact that she's got her lightsaber ignited she's throwing shit around and she's just getting in obi-wan's head and ewan mcgregor's reaction itself just just his whole oh my god vader's he's still here Mm. i thought i ended this Mm. i thought this was over just his whole like it, it gave me chills looking at you and McGregor have a full body just oh like just the 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 damn it part of him like damn it why why now why when these kids are, are ten am I being like why is this happening now it's been ten years they haven't found me but they're not giving up but why now is Leia in the spotlight. Why is she getting the attention? I don't need Vader realizing what she is and who she is. Mm. And if they follow me back to Tatooine or they figure out where I'm going, they're going to figure out who Luke is. I like right that. Now. I like that because all your paranoia is what we were getting without the dialogue. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And that, that face, that, 
what makes the moment so heavy. In his face of, I don't want to have to do this. Like, yeah. I feel like he knows Reva from somewhere. Like, that was also well, they say, the He same says thing. it. He says it to Alea and when they're standing in the alley. He tells her, they are. They used to be Jedis, and now that they now they are in, Inquisitors. So, basically, I, and with, they hunt their own now. Yeah. So, what, what at I, one point in time, I think that she might have been a youngling. And because Obi-Wan, and I think this might come out in the story later on, like... The guy they showed the flashback of the kids running in the temple, and whoever that master was was whooping ass. Oh man, they, she was a badass. It. She but, was she was killing it. Yeah, <laughs> I think that that Obi Wan could have rescued her, and he didn't. He kind of left her, and then she ends up becoming a Sith. So she's holding a grudge against him. That's that's what I think is going to happen. I in honestly, later with episodes. that scene, yeah. I've never seen. So we've seen a few Jedi like in Revenge of the Sith get shot down. But when it started off like that, where we're watching that that master take on one, and it pans out to the whole temple, and you're watching the 501st just gun down these other Jedi, I lost my shit. I was yeah. like, the last time we saw this, I was a kid. I was, it was 2005, 2006. That, that, that Chris has made in the chat, which is that Obi-Wan probably went through some serious grief. You know this whole thing, like, like even when um, Owen says, "Oh, you feel like you're not going to fail him, like you failed um, Anakin or or, some, or something like that, or whatever." That line cuts so damn deep because he, they were brothers, you know. And for him to leave him legless and uh, and an armless, um, be a wretch on on that planet, thinking, "Well, I, I'm not going to kill him. This planet's going to kill him. You know, that planet's going to finish him off." You know, and then leaving and not being like, "Woo, we got we got rid of him." No, he's got to be in agony. He's got to be in pain. On top of everything that he did in terms of slaughtering everybody, you know, in the Jedi Temple, um, and to go away and hide, you know, it's like Jimmy Smith said to him. Um, I say Jimmy Smith. I should know his character's name, right? <laughs> but, but you know, he says we failed. That's you don't want to hear that. <laughs> you know, um, you don't want to hear that any day that you've actually failed and to let it go, you know, and he can't because he's like we said before, Carl was saying, you know, about the nightmares, everything is just flashbacks off the flashbacks, you know, um, I feel that he's, he's gone inward into an internal depression where he doesn't have to um, acknowledge who and what he truly is, which is a Jedi. You know, he's got his mandate. Yeah, look out the window. Look over across. The, yeah, Luke's okay. All right, fine. But no one's been, no one's come hunting in, in 10 years. So I might as well retire. You know, and then all of a sudden, all this stuff starts to kick off. Do you think that maybe, because Chris brought up a good point in chat, the flashback show that Reva was a youngling because was that not her in that group of kids? Oh. I, didn't, I didn't see her, but I think what happened, this is, this is kind of what I think happened. She came to Tatooine. She's trying to escape. She's a young Jedi and or a, 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 a young person, maybe a youngling. She might have been a little bit older than the youngling by this time because 10 years has passed by and she, you know what I'm saying? So I think she was a little bit older than that. But I think it was like the dude that came to him in the desert and he's like, get away from me. You know, we're done. And she's now she's on the gutter because, you know, the Grand Inquisitor said we found you in the gutter. So I think she was a fallen Jedi that, you know, maybe might have been a youngling. And then she was like a teenager in the gutter and they found her and they found out that she has some force ability. She used to be a Pretty Jedi earlier. And she becomes and but I think Obi-Wan turned her away at one time was like, you know, no, we're we lost. I like bury your lightsaber earlier. Bury your lightsaber and, you know, and go on with your life. And she was just on the gutter. And then that's how they found her because they could have sensed they sensed her force abilities. You know, and she, ends up an inquisitor. That, that she probably resents the Jedi. You know, there could be a, a, an element of, of resentment that the Jedi didn't come to, to defend them. Yeah, it's possible. There's a lot of different you know, ways they were being taken out all over the place. No one was there to come and defend anybody at the temple. They went to the temple when the temple was practically empty. You know, there, there's a lot of avenue, like you're saying, there for, for reasons why she could be feeling bitter. Um, yeah, absolutely, and it all works. All of that works. Okay, so my ratings on it is this. 
I'm giving it a three. No, I'm fucking with y'all. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> I'm fucking with y'all. I really liked it. I thought that they did a good job. And this is looking at it as like a, a true critic. I thought the scoring was done. All of the sound effects was done perfectly. All the, the I think they have some beautiful sets. You know, yeah. they, they just look wonderful. They captured the scenery really, really well. I think all the acting was done really good. Ewing just crushed it. That dude is so much of a better actor since he did the pre the prequels. He has grown so much in his acting. His facial expressions cause you to truly feel what he was feeling at that moment. I think that some of the acting could have been, I think everybody did really good, but I think some of it could have been a little bit better. There were some scenes that I thought were just misplaced and just out of, out of whack. But overall, I think I would have to give the first two episodes, if I was judging them in total, the first one I would give probably a, a seven, and the second one I'd probably give an eight. So I'm going to give it a seven and a half overall. Yeah. I thought that they were really well done. I think there's plenty of room for, for those those shows to develop and, and, and grow, especially with the story already being written. So it'll be interesting to see where they're going to be taking us to, to, to raise those scores, you know, or even to keep those scores up like even for, um, for anybody. But um, with just the... I was just looking all over the place and thinking, well, okay, well, there's possibilities for that. There's possible, but like you said right at the start, CJ, seeing that clone trooper, that that for me was like, whoa, okay, okay, you know, because yeah, and he's wearing five oh first armor. So are we going to get an explanation of what happened there? We because... we may do or we may not, but we will see. So we, I'd love to see. I'd love to see Rex turn up somewhere, maybe in a soaker or something like that, and explain it there. Well, and like Andor, if you watch the Andor trailer really closely, yeah. If I'm gonna pull this up, I know we're not really done with the Obi Wan thing, but in the Andor trailer, when they round that corner and those the white troopers, those are clone troopers. Mm. Those aren't stormtroopers yet. So, right. in what point? Do we get the separation between clone and storm? Right. Like, where, when is that going to break through for us? Because I need that breakthrough. I need to know live action wise. Yeah. What the hell we're going to do here? Yeah. Because I know we're getting it in Bad Batch, but I'd rather. I don't get me wrong. I love the Bad Batch. I have all the Bad Batch on my desk. I have Lula. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I. I I just I love it to death, but I want to see that live action Who, interaction. Is it, batch? is it? Is it? I'm um, look. Correct me, man. Is it? Is it Swan in the in the in the Bad Batch? Um, who makes it makes a, a statement about? Or I could be getting confused. But someone makes a statement, Imperial side, about why they changed and and weaning them out and things like that. Um, and people being a being um children being abducted and i know it's not just what finn says in, a, in the force force awakens but so with the, i i understand where you're coming from they most the stormtroopers were not kidnapped as children like the ones that were in force awakens right uh the stormtroopers that we get in like a new hope empire return are people that were drafted or volunteered right so i think with that they're conscripted soldiers compared to clones right and in clone wars we get that explanation of we can go to planets and offer people jobs and we can get 40,000 50,000 people off of a planet and give them a job compared to having to wait five years for a batch of clones right yeah and i think i think that's bs i love clones i'm a clone i'm a clone sympathizer <laughs> i don't you know i think I think we might see Rex in here just because of the time period and because, well, no, yeah, because of the time period. And I think that at some point Rex is going to come to Obi-Wan and say, this is what we're doing. This is the plan. And Obi-Wan's going to give them him advice on, you know, where they should go. That would be such a big moment. <laughs> I got goosebumps when you just said that. That would be huge. I don't think Obi Wan is getting involved. Will get involved, and he'll explain to him why he can't get involved. Because Rex knows something in Rebels. Rex yeah. has that. He I don't know. He just knows something. 
and it would it would tie into everything real well, I think. So I, I, I could see us seeing Rex or even Cody. But I don't see... I don't see them bringing in a lot of characters. I really, I, I just don't get that feeling that we're going to see a lot. I think there's going to be a lot of newer characters. I don't think we're going to get a lot of uh, of older characters or uh, characters that are already around. I just don't, I just don't see it happening. Right. I, I think they're going to focus more on what's going on with Kenobi and they're going to continue that story of his anguish, his pain, what he's going yeah. through, how he's trying to con connect with um, uh, Qui-Gon. And I think it's going to be little short things that are happening um, that are more, you know, like little little stories within the story. Like he, yeah. like this last episode where he had to go rescue Leia. I think Luke's going to get into something and he's going to have to go and rescue them. And these little things are drawing attention to him to at some point Vader shows up on the planet. And I think right. that that's how it's going to, how it's going to go out. Right. I think or we'll have a scene with Rex and Rex and Bail Organa. I think yeah. that would be more likely. Like when Leia gets returned, Rex is like one of the guards and he's kind of like decoyed as one of Bail's guards just to have that rebel moment. I can well, see, I, that. see this is ten years after the fact, so I think they might already be on that other planet. Him, Wolf, and um Maybe. And, uh, I think they're they cause this is ten years later. I think they that well, you know, you know for a fact, okay, even if if it's program if order sixty six is programmed into their head, right? Into the into whatever the, the chip in their head is. As soon as that means that it would be some type of programming in their head to tell them who the Jedi are. So they know who all the Jedi are. So this person either had to get his chip the, the, the dude sitting on the curb either had to have his chip removed by Rex and him, or he is a... Uh, or it, he's more like um, the Bad Batch where it just didn't affect him or maybe his chip failed at some point because he would have known who Kenobi was because all of them knew all the Jedi what so if, they could execute Order 66. Because if not, they'd just be shooting random people. That dude might be a Jedi bow. They knew who the Jedi was. It was programmed into that chip because that's all they killed that was, was the Jedi. Rex? What if that was Rex? What if that was Rex playing decoy? Well, he was in blue. Yeah, well, he was in his 501st outfit, but the helmet didn't, like, we didn't see the helmet other than it upside down facing at Kenobi. What if that's Rex playing decoy and trying to recruit people for the rebellion? Yo, bro, whoa. Okay, now I'm fucking with myself here. <laughs> <laughs> that, would piss, <laughs> that would piss me off. You know how freaking cool that would be? It, I mean, and really, it, it's possible <laughs> that that was Rex, so they all look the same. Yeah, but Carl, but Carl, also, this thing you're saying about about Rex, I think what's special about him is that um, he was wasn't he the first one to feel like the Jedi were treating him like a real individual, like a real a human being. Whether that was through Ahsoka or, or one I of them, I think it was with Anakin. I think Anakin with when Rex sat there, and he's like, "I'm Captain Rex. You can call me Captain or Sir," and uh, Anakin was like, no, I'll just call you Rex. And I think that's where Rex had that moment of realization of, yeah, I'm not just a clone soldier. I, I can, I'm a human being to him. I'm a person. I'm not just some. And I'm not a number. Yeah. So, I think, yeah, I think that was, yeah. I, I think that relationship Rex has is that intimate, intimate between um, the Jedi and the troopers, and they all respected Rex. And Rex knew that his back was covered with the Jedi, and he would do the same for them. There was there's something about about the love Rex has for them, and they have for Rex. Yeah, because he fought in season seven of Clone Wars. He fought that inhibitor chip not to shoot Ahsoka. Mm. So, I mean, he fought the it inhibitor died. chip to the point where Ahsoka could right. knock him out and take it out. Yeah. That that's a lot of love. That's what love is. Yeah, like, yeah. it's got a lot of power to it. And oof. we can go on for hours about Rex. I love Rex. I love Rex, and I love Cody. So that's the thing is, with all these new shows that are coming out, they have so many opportunities to intermingle characters and show characters in their growth states. Or because, like right now, Han Solo would be probably what about twenty? He'd be about like twenty twenty. Uh, he'd be almost out in between 20 and 25 so you know that 
we could see him. We could see, you know, Chewbacca. We could see. And there's so many different. We could see Orla uh, Lando. We could see. There's so many different. And Lando would probably be the best candidate at this time because you know he's just being a scoundrel at this point he's young and still being you know doing what lando does so seeing him on tatooine wouldn't be that big of a deal or you know he we don't know that's another thing that they left us on the cliffhanger anyway because they take off and the dude says go meet these people and they just take off they don't know where they're going at this point at all <laughs> they have no idea where this ship is taking them it's all automated so he has they have no idea where this ship is going he obi-wan has no idea so we were left on a cliffhanger like okay where are they going who are they meeting i mean for all you know you're going to meet you're going to meet vader we don't know anything we don't know if that dude was really trying to help obi-wan or if he was just like Hey, I'm about to make a good bounty. I'm about to send him straight to Vader. We don't know anything that's going to happen at this point. Until Wednesday, we don't know nothing. That's a dark twist, man. That would be heavy. I mean, it could go a lot of different ways. Yeah. I'm playing with my brain. <laughs> <laughs> my brain hurts. It does. I hope no. they just go and drop Leia back off, damn you. Don't do this That to ship me. is automated. Yeah. So they don't know where they're going. And the dude hands them that card. And that card is, he was like, tell him that I sent you. Okay, that might be a damn card. Who knows? He could show up and hand him the card say, hey, this dude sent me. And they be like, okay, come with us. And then walk into a room with Vader standing there. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. Palpatine or a billion stormtroopers. You don't know what's going to happen at this point. We have no idea what's going to happen. We don't know who that dude was working for. We do know he's a criminal and he was hustling people. We do know. It. I mean, how hard is it for him just to tell? And that even Obi Wan says that. How can I trust you? I don't even know you. You well, was a, you're a criminal. If you caught that move, that moment, the boy that was sitting there with his mother has force abilities. Where the hell is he sending them if he has force abilities? If Ooh. you caught that moment, I see that he is sensitive, mm. and the mom is concerned. And wants to get him off planet. You oh, got to go yeah. back and watch it. He sets there and yeah. pulls that up about I, how his, he's got force sensibility and how he that, 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 he, how is he supposed life. to know if he don't have no force sensibility? Well, that's the thing. What if the mom came to him and showed the son to Haj, Haj, like, hey, my son can do this, and the son lifts up something, and Hajj's like, shit, dude, I love the Jedi. This is why I'm pretending to be one. I can't let this boy get killed. He's a boy. And oh, then, but he could be sending them to go be an inquisitor. That's what I'm saying. He could be sending them <laughs> to go to Vader. That's why your your plot is thickening and your plot's annoying me, damn there, you. There, there's so many different ways it can go. That's the great thing about Star Wars. We never know what where they're gonna go. These writers that are writing this, it's not Dave Filoni writing this, it's not Jan, John Favreau writing this. These are totally so they could take us in any direction, you know, that they that they want us. It, I'm pretty sure that, you know, Kathleen was probably like, hey, you got to stay on the timeline. You know, you got to stay with some stuff. But we do know, and it was one of the questions in the quiz before, how many Inquisitors there is. We know that there's a Grand Inquisitor and the Grand Inquisitor. There's the and Grand. So we know that with her killing, with Reva killing him, that there's another one, another Grand Inquisitor. At some point, this dude is popping up. How do we know they're not sending them to him? How do we know? We don't know any of this. We don't. They, all this stuff has been created within a, within the last year. You know, all the writing on this, everything's been created in the last year. So we don't have no idea whatsoever. We are dealing with brand new writers. That usually we got Dave or John writing all this stuff. These are brand new people. And so Andor was finished. They finished making Andor before they even started on on Kenobi. I think. You know, so in terms of them writing these things and it, they know what the jigsaw is they're putting together, I guess. Um, because also with Andor, we don't know how far back that's going. It's, you know, um, can't be too far because he looks quite young in that or he's just out of shape. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think I think this whole plan, this, this thing in terms of mapping out stories and when they're placing them and stuff like that, I don't know how far ahead they are, whether it's five years or heck, in terms of what they're writing, whether they make it or not. But it's, it's, it'll be damn interesting, especially when you pull up something like that. You can imagine the doors opening, just Inquisitors stood there with troopers and Vader expecting them. It's just like, that's just, yeah, that's quite ominous. Um, I hope not. We know at some point. 
we we know at some point that Obi Wan and and Vader get into a fight. Yeah, we know that is going to happen. Yeah. So with that knowing that that's going to happen, we're all thinking that it's going to be the climax and at the end. You know, yeah. but this might be the staging to set it up for this to happen. Obi Wan and Vader get into a fight. Vader thinks that he kills Obi Wan. But Obi Wan survives, and that's how he doesn't know about his master for or about Obi Wan still being alive for eight years. I think he be able to talk more by this point. I just, what if he I'm pulls curious. that cloak trick, and that's why Vader steps on it in A New Hope? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to make it funny there. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I thought I killed you. That you did this cloak. That was a trick the first time. What? Right. Well, I'm I'm curious how they're gonna bring about that. Vader Obi Wan showdown without Vader finding out. Oh, flip! I have a kid. Like Anakin or like Luke or Leia. There's my kid. You know what I mean? Like because Vader I, supposedly doesn't really know for sure. He doesn't. And so how are how are they going to get in the fight if Obi Wan is either with Leia or watching over Luke? So we got to have some other kind well, of story. There's, there's like there's there's beef there. They had they had beef there before the kids were even born. Do you know what I mean? And he thinks right. Padme really died giving birth or something like that. Well, that's what he was told. So the only person he wants to blame is Kenobi, really. You know. Um, but when has has Kenobi already killed Darth Maul by this point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He been no. Yeah. yeah, he hasn't killed Darth Maul yet. If you watch Rebels, Obi Wan oh. is Alec Guinness. Obi Wan in that, he's not there yet. Yeah, that's that's true. He's not there yet. Oh, no, it, I wanted that. I wanted that fucking moment. I thought it was going to be in that moment. <laughs> so you'd have to age. You'd have to age Ewan out to be old Ben at that point. And we're not. I think like Ewan was. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy was already talking about the possibility of continuing this due to the fact that the cast and the crew had so much fun doing so. Yo, Kathleen's already thinking about maybe if this goes the right way, we can continue this, and then we could get that mall, like that Ray Park. I like to think when they say things like that, they've already written it. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Oh, because that could be that could be a thing. You know, you're talking. He's he's old. He's old. Um, Alec Guinness at this point, but he's he's what ten years or fifteen or years away from being that old character. You know, so um, maybe we're thinking the big finale is Darth Vader, but it could be more because I, I remember vaguely with the, with the cartoons that Maul stumbles onto what's being hidden on, on um, Mos Eisley, on, on Tatooine. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, and when he kills him, he's like, "Is he the chosen one?" He kills one? him. It says online that Darth uh, Obi Wan kills uh, uh, Maul in thirty two BBY. Okay, yeah, explain that to me. Oh, I don't 32 BBY. When was the Battle of Yavin? It wasn't that the Battle of Yavin was 34 uh, BBY, wasn't it? 34. Yeah, it was 34. So, so it was two years before the Battle of Yavin before Obi Wan dies. So that's two years right before a new hope. You could really give us this, guys. Come on, listen to us. Well, you could give us this moment. Uh, it has been to... announced that oh, the mall isn't going to be in the series, so either not either. He, they're lying to us so we can be surprised or that they're going to make a season two and he's going to be in season two because we know he's not in season one. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Deal with okay. Vader first and then more in this, in this um, second season, maybe. Well, wow. They might already have the second, third, fourth, fifth season already written. We don't know. We don't even know. <laughs> we have no idea what's going to happen. I hope that I hope they come out. I mean, just from what I've seen on with the first two episodes, and I'm pretty sure that it's just gonna it's gonna get better. That I think that, that they could definitely have multiple seasons of of this, and they could really go in a, in a very good direction to bring in Maul or bring in some other characters that we wouldn't think to see. Just an excuse to get Kenobi on the screen, man. It's so <laughs> right. Hey, did y'all also see that Ewan McGregor was a, an executive producer of this too? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, I mean, he has to to 
you know, I know that as an actor and, you, you know, you have to follow the, uh, you have to fill out the confidentiality uh, stuff and everything that they can't say certain things. But there are some things that he has said, like, I would I would love to be in a season two. I would I, I would love to continue being uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi all the way up till, you know, the point of new hope. And like, so it, it's kind of just when he says stuff like that, it's like, dude, OK, wait a minute. Is it y'all gonna make some big jumps in this in this in this six part series, or y'all already planning on making a series uh, or making a season two out of it? It's just certain things. It's just like okay, but I know you can't say it, but the way you're saying things just makes me think that they're already planning on the season two. And I I don't see why I could see the parts of it that that were that were based for young people. You know, like some of the stuff was based for newer viewers. Yeah. Because it was just like, what? Like, why would you do that? But I understood that. I looked at it and I tried to view it as I've already watched it four times. So as I watched it, I'm sitting there seeing the different aspects of what they're trying to do. I was like, okay, wait a minute, what? That, that, oh, oh, okay, I understand. It's for it's for younger viewers. It's for the new viewers. As a, Disney, as a company making money, they have to. They're trying to create new new people to come into the franchise and to love Star Wars. So I know certain things that they do. It was also brought up in the chat. I think Chris brought up in the chat. They actually changed the TV rating to TV 14. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that some of the things that they're doing is based on that. Like Obi-Wan Kenobi, we've seen how bad Obi-Wan Kenobi can like physically fight like Hand to hand is terrible. His hand to hand is not that good. This dude's flipping people over and doing that. That's something that's going to be more for younger people, younger kids, younger people, or or people in the age of anywhere from ten to twenty five are going to like the flips and stuff. That's more MMA, martial artist type stuff. They're going to like that stuff better. We used to oh Obi Wan. This dude kicked the metal droid in the leg. Like why would you kick? You know it's gonna hurt you, idiot. It you know was still saying? a try. He force kicked it and it didn't work. It happened. Let him let him be him. It's Obi Wan. So I think that you know I think I seen the stuff that they were doing for the newer viewers. They were trying to draw yeah. attention. Yeah. So I understood that, but it's there. And it's something that we have to get used to as older viewers. Some people that, you know, we've been Star Wars fans for a lot. They're trying to attract new viewers so they can make money. So we have to understand that they're doing that. So, but at the same time, I can see the direction. Like, it, they define the story so well that I can see the direction in which it is going. It, and I see that things could go in multiple different ways and they're all exciting to me, even if it went downwards, even if it got worse, I don't think it could get worse. I I just don't see it happening because you can see the story. You can see the way that it's, that it's going. We know that he has to fight Vader at some point. We know that the Inquisitors, he's going to have to deal with these Inquisitors. So he's going to have to deal with Reva at some point because she is just... Uh, she, She's a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, and she's obsessed with him. So I see these things happening, and I know that that's gonna. That's where I'm gonna get my my lightsaber battles. That's where I'm gonna get some of the things that I'm gonna get to see that I've been waiting to see. I just I, I don't know. I'm like I said, I'm pleasantly surprised on what they did. I thought. It, I honestly, I was really excited about seeing it, but I honestly thought that it was going to be way worse than this. I thought it was going to, I just had this feeling that it was going to be like Book of Boba Fett. Like, what, what, what are you talking about? What, what's going on? Like, I don't understand this. This is not Boba Fett. I, I just <laughs> want to pull up one thing. The spice moment with that kid. I wanted the moment of you want to go home and rethink your life. Yeah, I just I wanted, wanted that, that moment. I'm sorry. I wanted <laughs> that moment. And the fact that he threw the spice down and put his mask on. And they all just lay in their high as hell. <laughs> Reva so comes in and just looks at him. <laughs> I just really <laughs> wanted that moment. You want to go home and rethink your life. As, as, as funny thing is, as <laughs> she said that, the first thing that went through my mind was, I know Spice. <laughs> you know? That's all I thought. I wasn't even thinking anything else. Hey, but Garrison, is there anything, is there anything you're hoping to, to kind of see in, in this in this season? Um that that you that you yeah you've been longing for, just in the connection. Um, it doesn't have to be anything split or anything. I, I want to see 
a little bit more of Obi Wan struggle, and the, I want to see some darkness to the show, a little bit more maturity because they raised it. It used to be TV seven, now it's TV fourteen. So with right. that, I feel like you can bump it up a little bit, make it a little bit more serious. Um, I also want to see where Reva is coming from. I want to see why she's so obsessed, and I want to see more of her drive because she seemed like a pretty big character in the in the previews. And in these first two episodes, she just seems kind of, yeah. So I want to see more of her and what's going to make her such a big character and why. Right. Um, yeah, mostly with that. I want to see just a solid story. I want I, I want less cheesiness. But that's not, I'm have sensitive to cheesiness stuff. Yeah, we might but, see, you know, like in the cartoons, there, there's like always one or two episodes that are just yeah. like, They've made you wait a whole week. I don't know how how regular it came on your TV screen, but they made me wait a whole week. I watched this thing. I'm like, oh, this one isn't even for me. (laughs) You know, Uh, know, and then next one, another week later, then it's all about story, you know? So maybe maybe they're mixing one or two. Maybe, yeah. I think with the introduction of of Vader in the way that they did, um, in that small, small way, could could indicate that we're about to get around. Dude, I stopped it so many times on that end scene and we're just trying to look. I'm like looking at it. looks like if you right before it clicks off to the, 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 the dark part where the credits start, if you look, it looks like the whole center of his chest is gone. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, is that why he got to breathe? They had to take his lungs out, and they just left his yeah. whole center open? Like, why does it look like that? Like, it just made me think, like, are we going to get more of how he looks inside his back to tank or whatever that is? Oh, not, yeah. I, don't, I, I do want to see, see more, more of that. I want to see, see I want to see what he really looks like, like how he looks yeah. like when he doesn't have all his prosthetics on and he's, you know, in that. I want to see what he really looks like. Yeah. And I want to see, see the Vader. point. You can't give me enough Vader right now. I, and I want to see the point where Obi Wan meets Vader, just because of the interviews with Ewing, where he's talking about when the first time he sees Vader on the set, how he felt like a seven-year-old, how terrified he was, and I just want to see how that projects in the series, like because they did, they, he just walked out on set and he turns around to Anakin's in full Vader gear and he's like, holy shit. And he was scared. He was actually fearful. And I want to see how he portrays that on the screen. Like, I really want to see that. I'm so excited to see that moment. Now, it might take six episodes for us to see that. Or it might be next week. We don't know at this point. But I, I just, I, I, that's yeah. what I, I want to see. That I think that that's going to be the arcing moment of the whole series. Yeah. Like, when we see that that confrontation, like. and facing up again, yeah. I think it's I think it's going to be and and I think the story is leading us where it's supposed to lead us to show how the interaction is going to happen. Like Obi Wan is not going to want to kill Anakin again. Like mm-hmm. he just can't do it. So he has to figure out a way to keep Anakin from searching for him. Like how can I? And I think that that's how they're going to play it out. Yeah. I don't know yet. We'll see. But I, all I know is that I, I was, I was, like I said, I was pleasantly surprised on just the, the the way they made it. Like I said, for for me to feel like excited, but at the same time confused, like okay, what? Oh, what I, I, I was just, I was, just, I was shocked because I've never really felt that way before. Like I, like I either watch something and I'm like, okay, I like it or I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I've never been that person that's been like, yeah, you know, it's either I like it or I don't like it. And this had me like, I like it, but I, I, I don't know why. I, I, I don't like there. It wasn't nothing special. It wasn't it wasn't like something that was just extremely like, oh, my God, oh, Jesus, oh, this is the best <laughs> day ever. But at the same time, it was like, dude, and like literally I've watched this shit four times already. I watched it. You know, Friday night, I woke up, watched it. I woke up that morning. Before, I went back to sleep, woke up, watched it again. Came off from work yesterday, watched it again. Then I watched it again this morning, and I'm like, dude, I can't, I can't figure out why I'm getting these emotions. And at first, it was like, dude, you just love Obi-Wan Kenobi, so you're, you're, you're being one of them fanatic Star Wars fans that's just saying, you know what I'm saying, it's Star Wars, you have to love it. But then I, as I kept on thinking about it, I'm like, it's not that. 
Mm. I just liked it. I don't. I, I I could not tell you a specific moment or specific point in time that made it like, you know, just why well, I, I liked it. I just I don't know if it was the story. I don't know if it was the the dramatics. I don't know if, what it was, but watching both of that now, if they had just put out the first one, I might have a different opinion of it, or if they, you know, the, or just the second one. But them putting out both of them together, I think, was an excellent idea because that's what gave me watching both of them together and being sitting there and being like, "Wow!" I was just in a sense of wow. It was actually Obi Wan Kenobi, all seen again, and being a totally different character within the same character because now he's not a Jedi anymore. And I think that just came to me. I'm just going to tell y'all that I figured it out. <laughs> That's the thing that got me was he is restricting when these other Jedis can't. He yeah. is holding back when these other Jedis are dying because of the mandate to help others. He's like, screw y'all, whatever. I'm staying here. I got to protect this boy over here. You know what I'm saying? I can't do it. I can't help y'all. Go hide your lightsabers. Live a regular life. Don't help nobody. We lost. It's done. You know what I'm saying? So with that attitude coming from Obi-Wan Kenobi that has always been there, always figured out a way, you know, is a the, 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 the epitome of Jedi to not being a Jedi gives you that sense of, I want to know what's going to happen. Yeah. I need to know what's going to happen next. Yeah. I mean, they, even CJ, when when um, he first pulls out that bag, or it looks, you see that red and white, and it's the toy. Before I clocked that, before I clocked the, the wing of it, I saw red and white, and I thought, is that one of his old armor pieces? Oh, I did too. At first, I was like, is that a shoulder plate from the Clone Wars? And then when he pulled out, when like when he saw him look at it, I was like. No, that's the no. I'm still excited though because that's the plane he gives Luke, and Luke plays with that in the New Hope. Yeah, but I thought maybe it might be that shoulder plate. Like, yeah, so we know uh, at some point that Owen had, had to tell. give it to him. Yeah, we know at some point because it's, it's in the New Hope, so he knows that Owen gave it to him, even though he goes to Obi Wan and says, "Hey, stop dropping shit off, leave us alone." We know that at some point Uncle Owen gives him the the the, the ship because he's playing with it. Yeah. Or he finds it, you know, he might find a box of shit. But that's also we know at some point that Luke Luke meets Obi-Wan because he knows that his name is Ben. He's like, oh, oh, right. oh Ben Kenobi, the hermit in New yeah. Hope. So we know at some point they meet each other. Are they gonna show us that? Are they gonna show us the meeting point? I thought that, you know, they might have met in the first two episodes, but they didn't show us that. So we still have that to come. There's so many things that they can do. It's just like, I'm like super excited to see the, the, I, the next I, one. I just love that it, it it showed the connection and it, it branched off, but it was still connected when it became about him looking after Leia. I love that. I, you know, that wouldn't have been anywhere in my wildest imaginations or concepts of thinking, oh, where are they going to go with this show? Oh, so maybe he's going to be looking after the kid or I don't know. Maybe, I have no idea, you know, um, but to have, the two kids connected to, to this individual in the same show. Um, and to start with Leia, you know, I thought that was, I thought that was just, I thought that, that was, was bold. Yeah. I that it was, was very just, bold. Yeah. Because yeah, like I, Chris. when I first saw Luke, I thought, oh, are they going to do a separate show for Leia? You know? Yes, Chris, I agree with you on that. Chris says, I'm already excited for Star Wars Galaxy as this show. Yes, I want to see that. I want to see them see talk the about the so making... Good of this show when when they get to actually tell the things that is happening and how they did things i think because the only thing that i really like when the ship flies in um when the ships are uh when the ship flies in to uh on alderaan at the uh, Organa's palace that just looked at cheap that was so cheaply done and then when um uh the yopi sets down the CGI on that was just terrible. Every scene that, that he kneels down for Obi Wan to get off, I was like, "Oh God, y'all could have done way better than that." That's just <laughs> terrible. It was so badly done, but it it almost made it look like it was like cartoonish. I was like, "What? What are they trying? What is this? The new stuff? I thought y'all got better at this. This is like back when Han stepped over 
you know, uh, oh, well, job, no, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> like this, that's how bad this is. Like, why would y'all do that? It was not that bad. It was terrible. I was it like, was dude, it looks so fake. Like, oh man, it was, so, y'all don't mess that up. I still can't get over you and that's an actual camel with the uh -huh. dots on it to uh -huh. do the CGI. Uh -huh. Ewan wants that damn camel. He was so convinced that he wants that camel. He wants he wants a camel. He's like, I'll take this camel home. They're like, no, you can't. This belongs to somebody. He's like, I will buy it. I want the camel. Like the fact that he wanted the camel after the show, obviously there's some attachment to that camel. <laughs> but he can name it Rue. It just did not like that camel. They could have got a better camel to kneel down or something because that yeah, it hey, just, it, it just looked it bad. But I have to ultimately say the one of my favorite parts of it, the scoring. Oh, the scoring, the music on it, and the sound effects was just oh, it was it was so well done. Like you heard the sound before you seen the action. It flowed together. It was just perfect. Like, do I could not like and like I said, I watched it four times. So I I'm looking for these things. Like, is the, is the sound effects matching up with the blaster bolt? Is this you know does this match up with this? Does does you know? The lightsaber coming on is it already extended out before we hear the sound or is, is it is it yeah. simultaneously i look for those things and i could not find a flaw in there deborah chow did an excellent job or whoever edited it they did an excellent job of uh, of getting everything perfect i mean it was like there was a couple times but it was so close that it was unnoticeable to the, the regular person that's not looking for it you would never notice it they did an excellent job on it and I got to give it up to John Williams, you know, a hundred million years old, and that dude is still pumping out good, good soundtracks for Star Wars. <laughs> that dude, that dude, the oldest Jedi of them all. That's a that's a good theme song. I like that theme song. It has a little bit of that darkness to it, but it still has the light of the Jedi kind of thing going on. Yeah. I I liked it. I liked it a lot. I was like, dude, this is John Williams is is the shit. That dude is. He he gonna be like ten million still pumping out Star Wars stuff. <laughs> I swear that dude. You got there. He's ninety years old, ninety, and he's still writing music. Most people can't even remember their name at ninety years old. You know, <laughs> and this dude is still writing great music. <laughs> huh? They can't even wipe their own ass at ninety. <laughs> Should I have a hard time? And I'm only forty five. You know, <laughs> so I can just imagine when I'm ninety. Your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, shit, babe, come handle this for me. I, I can't reach back to my I arms. Can't reach. <laughs> Jackson, Jackson, it's the broad shoulder problem. We know that problem. And, so and this dude, goes, like, so I gotta pull this up real fast. So Tori and I were laying in bed last night, and she like went to like stretch out my arm. I couldn't. I couldn't even touch my back. <laughs> <clears throat> like I could probably get to the lower center, but anything higher, I'm like touching my rib cage. And she's like, what is your issue? Why can't you bend your arm like that? I'm like, it's not my arm. It's my damn shoulders. And, and you're like, only what? 26. I'm about to be 25, 25. No, 25. So I, just imagine when you get my age and you're 40. You won't be like shoulders. That's the problem with it. Like I there's can't, a lot of things that I can't do no more. I'd be like, what the hell? I have a problem walking up the stairs. I, I think <laughs> I'm getting clumsy <laughs> as I'm getting older. And this dude was writing full scores. <laughs> He's getting a whole orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a struggle wiping my ass. We were laying in bed and you like tried to pin my arm Damn, on my you were trying to wipe your ass in bed. Yeah, you know, uh, I couldn't reach it. I couldn't reach the toilet right. paper, so I like laid down so she could wipe it for me. You know, she she loves <laughs> me like that. Uh, a lot of love in the house, you know. I see Addison in the chat. Is Addison still here, or did she click uh, off? No, nah, she's watching. She just oh, probably not pay attention to all of it. She was here so, a while ago. Are yeah, we ready her. to move on from this? Yes, this listen. has been two hours and almost four minutes of beautiful Kenobi. Beautiful yeah. Kenobi. Okay, let's go to the news and rumors. Well, hey, you want? I got a what if if y'all want to do it or y'all want to go to the news and rumors. It's up to y'all. Y'all can do what y'all what, what want to do. The what if might take a while because it's, it's, it's a good one. I might save it till next week. No, let's how about that. we just save let's it? Okay, go to news and rumors. We all admit news and rumors. We know you're going first, CJ. Me? So oh, excited. man. Oh, man. Did fucking Celebration not give us what we wanted or what? Honestly, 
I was too busy watching Kenobi. I ain't watching none of the celebrations. <laughs> I, like I said, I was watching Celebration like Sunday Sermon. It was just, it was there. It was Hasbro. Oh, man. Okay, we already expected this, but they're giving us all the Black Series of the Kenobi figures. So we got the Grand Inquisitor, Reva, um, Fifth Brother, whatever, all that. Did y'all but see they, the, what, the, the, what was that, the Sixth Sister or the Eighth Sister, the other chick? I think that was the six sisters. Oh my what God. what what species is there? Because her like I don't know. Head, head stuff. She had four of them coming out of her thing. So I was like, who? Like, what is this? Like, who? What species is she? But we're getting all the black series on that. They are bringing back Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith Jedi. So we are getting multiple Jedi black series figures. Um, my most exciting thing and. My woman already pulled it up in the chat. Thanks for spoiling it. Leia's little droid Lola, as we see in the show that she carries around with her, the little companion, her R2 before R2. Hasbro's dropping that toy, and it has 45 different capabilities to it. It can talk and communicate with you. It has four different modes to it. It's just a... Does it hover like it does on the show? Uh, no, it's got little feet. If it I could think hover, it that would be dope. <laughs> I think I think it'd be cool if it hovered, but I don't think we're that far in technology. What is that? Um, that's the deluxe run, right? Because I think there's a couple. Of, I think that's the deluxe one. Yeah, there's there's a, there's two different two different sets. You can get a child's one where it's for like a kid between the ages of like two and ten, and then you have right. the adult one where it's the actual size one that right. Leia carries around with her. Yeah. Um, John Favreau is now immortalized as his own action figure. We got Dave Filoni. We got we got you know him as an X-wing pilot, but John Favreau, he is the heavy gunner in the Mandalorian, as we all know. They made his toy finally, and you can take the heavy gunner helmet off, and you see John Favreau under it. So cool! I'm so, so excited cool. for that. So that was cool. I saw that. That was the first thing on the first day of celebration. They dropped Hasbro did. They gave that exclusive out. Um. They are giving us a bunch of new Obi-Wan Lego. So his uh, Jedi Starfighter, uh, Obi-Wan Invader, little like kids Lego buildups. And then we are getting the Inquisitor ship. Well, Hasbro kind of felt nostalgic and started going into Ralph McQuarrie's paintings of the first series of stuff for A New Hope. And we're getting the first draft Vader and the first draft Obi-Wan action figures in black series form and they are coming in double uh, two packs oh wow they felt bad because they didn't give us give us a six inch scale black series mall so they're giving us a mall i got excited because i don't have one i have a little guy from season seven i need the taller form of darth maul um that is my hasbro news if anybody wants to steal the spotlight because i have a bunch of stuff from celebration well, only thing that I got from Celebration is everybody's running around here talking about eight new Star Wars projects announced. And I'm like, dude, it's not eight. It's like two. Because all the rest of them has already been announced. Skeleton yeah. crew. Yeah, you got Andor, announced the, been announced. The Ahsoka's been announced. The Mandalorian Season 3, been announced. We got Skeleton Crew. With Jude Law. And then um, Rangers of the New Republic, which was announced, but then it was canceled. And now it's back again in Orlando. We got the Acolyte. We already knew that that come out in an untitled Star Wars film. We already knew all that stuff oh, was coming out. Oh, you're missing Tales of the Jedi, too. Well, Tales of the Jedi, but that's not that's not announced as live action. It wasn't announced as oh, live so action. Indiana Jones 5. Oh, that was cool. I saw that, and they gave us that set photo of him standing there, and I'm like, that's fucking Harrison Ford. <laughs> and he's like 102. Jesus Christ. Man, <laughs> he's like 102. <laughs> Like, dude, man, you're so like excited. fucking clap, crashing planes and still <laughs> acting, and you're like a million. They gave us a Wicket. <laughs> they gave us the Wicket trailer, too. I was excited for that. I loved Which Wicket. One? Wicket, no, not Wicket. Um, why did I say Wicket? Willow. Willow, thank you. Oh, I don't know why I said Wicket. I was thinking of the same person, though. Yes, you were. <laughs> they gave us the Willow trailer, and I. <sighs> Just watching that, and it was like, oh, cool. I get it. Yes. Okay, cool. Is it a movie or is it a TV series? And they're like, oh, it's a TV show. And I'm like, I have to wait a week 
after week after week. Again, I am 20 fucking five. I'm tired of weeks. I don't got a lot of time in my life to do this. <laughs> For my kids, they can suffer through the pain that I had to go through watching Clone Wars. And it's the year that comes out too, as well. Yes, yes. Might as well be Christmas. Um, yeah, the skeleton crew. I love that. That's that's the first thing they announced on Thursday. Like I said, I didn't get it. I haven't watched none of the celebration stuff. Like I'll probably wait till it's all done and then just binge watch all of it at one time, so I can just watch it back to back. That's what I do. Um. So I get everything, but like, I just, I don't know. Like the little stuff that I seen on social media about the skeleton crew, it was kind of like, what is this about? Like, what's going on? I think it's about clones. It's about 10 year olds. <laughs> Jude Law's in it. Teacher. Well, did you, did you read <laughs> what it's about? No, it didn't give us a description, did it? Yeah, bro. It's about 10 year olds. Finding their way in the galaxy. Yeah, hey, let me find it. I'll read it for you. Well, while you're finding that, they gave us a sneak peek photo of the set of the Mandalorian season three of Bo-Katan sitting on what I think looks like a throne, but it looks like also a bed because it looks like she's got a comforter right next to her. She's sitting there. It's got it's really dark on her face, but you see her helmet right next to her. She's got her hands, and it's like she's looking at somebody walking up to her. Wow. And it is a beautiful photo. I'll put it on the Instagram. You'll find it. you probably find it on the Star Wars page also. They also yeah, dropped. Says, oh, go ahead. I was a Star Wars crew. The new series will follow a group of 10-year-old kids from a small planet who get lost in the galaxy and must try to find their way home. And Jude Law is going to be in it? Jude Law is a great actor. Why would they give him a children's show? I don't know. Well, it might be dope. It might be. It's, I mean, it could be ten. It could be ten younglings. It could be it's ten. It's supposed to be like a Star Wars version of the classic Amblin coming of age adventure films of the eighties. So maybe like a Star Wars Goonies or some shit. <laughs> I'm okay yeah, with that. I like right the there. Goonies. <laughs> um, they also dropped Star Wars Lego Summer Vacation. What the hell is that about? Uh, it's about obviously it's summer vacation for Lego Star Wars characters. Duh. No. Hey, hey, what, what are you complaining about, Kyle? You get to lay in the bikini again. <laughs> I was gonna say, did you spot um, C three PO and and uh, yes, uh huh, <laughs> that was nice. And then they gave us that other droid walking up to her and Leo's being nice. Yeah, it's like no, yeah. give us the three PO moment, you assholes. We saw him; <laughs> he's standing right there. But yeah, no. And then they gave us the Jedi Survivor trailer. Yeah. I Who the, the hell trailer. is in that back to tank? I can't tell. I couldn't tell. Is that like, Quinlan Voss? I, I don't know. I couldn't tell who it was. I like I was looking like I didn't go back and rewind it or anything because I was just in the middle of doing something else when I seen it. But like I could I didn't I couldn't figure it out. I was like, what what who is that? Like, because it, it, it just flashes so quickly, it's hard to really tell. And then we get Inquisitors, the Grand Inquisitor in this game. Yes. There's going to be a lot of Inquisitors in a lot of things from this point forward. I think we're going to see Inquisitors in Andor. Um, I don't know if we'll see. We might see them because just because they fell in Rebels doesn't mean that they were all dead. And that was only they killed the one, Maul killed the one, and then the other two or the one flew off but we don't actually no they all die all but there's 12 of them so there's still more of them out there so we have to look i i have a feeling that we're going to see more we're going to see a lot more inquisitors i think rebels opened that up and i think that's when you know they gave special thanks to um dave filoni i think it was because of the inquisitors i think that was the whole thing because that was the inquisitors were his idea he's the creator of the inquisitors but yeah, that's <clears throat> that's just honestly that's most of the news I've got so far. I mean, we obviously have celebration today, and we'll obviously get Saturday's always the biggest day for celebration, so we're gonna get a lot more. Um, I know Ashley Eckstein has came out and talked about her battle with mental illness and how 
Star Wars, she's pushing for a Star Wars community on Star Wars uh, YouTube to kind of help with the mental awareness, like the mental illness awareness and how she can help people get through the way through Star Wars and through being Ahsoka. And then she turned around and kind of shamelessly <laughs> dropped her clothing line and how she went to Skywalker Ranch and got to play with the archives and go off of like that stuff. Yeah. I, I'm excited to see her her mental uh, mental illness awareness project through Star Wars by using Star Wars. Yeah, I think that would. Now, be I was great. thinking about doing it for MS. I was thinking about coming up with a, a, a podcast or something to talk about MS and how Star Wars helps me with that because it gives me something to do, keeps my mind thinking. Mm. Absolutely. But Garrison, do you have any news? Anything that you want to talk about specifically? That obviously I've ran the show and said. Uh, Besides kind of what I've already talked about, um, I know they also announced that the new movies coming out are set to um, revolve around like the sequel timeline. So we'll get more movies around that time period rather than other time periods. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, is, um, does that mean we're going to get more Daisy really or if it's around know, that timeline? Diego, but... Well, <laughs> I don't know. That's going to be kind of, I mean, I wonder if it's like different rebel cells or, you know, has something to do with Luke because I don't, I don't know. It's this just is not, movies will be set around the sequel era. Like that, that, that kind of scares me a little bit. I mean, I want like a good, I thought, you know, I, mean, I was really hoping for a Bane or Revan or, you know, something, something Everybody's in that sense. <laughs> but to put it around a sequel timeline, that means, like, that's going to be, I think this is going to be all new projects that are not, that don't necessarily fit within the Star Wars story. I think they're going to be more, like, I don't know, it's going to be, I don't know how they can do that, you know, how um, it's going to work. Like, <clears throat> that's, I'm, I'm kind of scared now. So, this was dropped today. Uh, they talked about more about Jedi Survivor. Jedi Survivor takes place five years after Jedi Fallen Order, ten years after Revenge of the Sith. The same timeline as Kenobi. Oh, so we could see Cal. We could see Cal Kestis. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, I'm okay with that. I'm so okay with that. That would be so. That you know what they're gonna do? He's gonna have a just a quick cameo. He's gonna he's gonna be walking up to. Obi Wan talking about help me. They're after me, and, and he's gonna be like, uh, no. (laughs) <laughs> that's gonna be it. That's gonna be the whole thing. <laughs> uh, I, I they keep just dropping news every time I refresh my page. Uh, Regal Robot is giving us the option to buy Boba Fett's gaffy stick, live action. Two I think rep, I seen that scale. like a couple weeks ago though. I think I seen that a couple weeks ago on the. Um, I think it was on TikTok. I seen it. This dropped. Show. This dropped forty minutes ago. Well, this, that'll mean it's brand new news. Maybe it's just new news that they put out. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Lego is giving us a whole new Lego line of Obi-Wan Kenobi stuff. Like Kenobi series stuff, which I've already probably touched on a little bit. Oh, you know, they was going to do that anyway. Yeah. All the toy makers <laughs> are going to be coming out with so much Obi-Wan Kenobi stuff. We're going to be drowning in Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, stuff. Oh, this just dropped like 30 minutes ago also. We're getting an Inquisitor's lightsaber through Hasbro. Oh, I think I saw a demo of that. Yeah, a spin. Uh, I don't know. I uh-huh. sure hope. I didn't see it spin, but I'd like that. I'd like to think so it does. But otherwise, I would what? lose my mind. Otherwise, you're just gonna break your wrist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we're getting so far. Hasbro has dropped fourteen new action figures. Some are just revamped. Some are brand new stuff that we're getting from Kenobi. We're getting all new lightsabers. I mean, this is the time for merchandise, if any. Oh, yeah. All right, well. We have a- all right, let's go. Let, we didn't really think, we didn't really set up for the, for the, because we knew we was going to be talking for a very long time, so didn't already set up for any uh, quiz questions. But I do have one, and this this okay. the the pertains to Obi Wan. Okay, 
What actor got paid the most out of every Star Wars actors that there's ever been? Who made the most money as an actor off of Star Wars? Alec Guinness. Uh, Alec Guinness. I think uh, Alec Guinness. Uh, y'all, y'all, all y'all are right. Because he got 2% of the gross box office of the movies. No oh, way. he made a hell of a deal on that. Far so out. off of one movie, he made $95 million. <laughs> Yo, he's set for life. Movie. Back 90, in, well, he's dead yeah. now. Didn't Alec Guinness die? Yeah, he's he's gone. But you gotta think that that income is still in a bank account where his family is running off that. Well, he's still he, getting he was 2% in Empire. He was in Empire, and you know he probably kept that same deal going into Empire. Well, he's in Empire and Return of the yeah. Jedi under the Ghost. But as him being like like seen like not as a Force Ghost, he was only in the uh, New Hope, and he, dude. Just off of him being on, because that was his contract, is he got 2% of gross of box office from the movie. So he got the 2% of the gross box office. Not after after they paid taxes on everything off of the gross. Not the net, the gross. So he made $95 million. And he is the highest paid Star Wars actor that there is. Did George Lucas um, pay everybody again when uh, when the numbers came in um, for the for a start for A New Hope? I think he gave everybody bonuses, but I know James Earl Jones only got paid seventy five hundred dollars to voice Vader. <laughs> no hope. <laughs> seventy five, seven thousand five hundred dollars. That's all he got. And he was the most Vader. mesmerizing character, other than three PO and R two. Everybody loved Vader. <laughs> yeah, everybody still loves Vader. What are you talking about? People yeah, are talking know. about Obi Wan. They're talking about when is Vader coming? That's all you see. <laughs> when is Vader? Why didn't we get Vader? Like we did get him for 1.2 seconds at the very end of the second episode. They talked about him. That was enough. Uh, nah, that was crazy. Sorry guys, we didn't have a quiz set up really and all that stuff. We, we I just knew that we was gonna be talking about Obi-Wan for nope. a very long time. So I was like, dude, there ain't Two no point in this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we 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 gonna talk about Obi-Wan because that's what it, right now, that's what's happening in Star Wars, and I, I think I think that it's gonna go. I think we're gonna get some really great Star Wars um, off of this. I don't know anything after that. I'm really excited about the Acolyte coming out, but uh, you know, oh, everything sorry. else, I'm just like, uh, I'm just yeah. ready for and the that new Andor, Sorry, that Andor trailer looked pretty dope. It made me. Oh, it looked time. great. Yeah. But you, and you got to remember, they made Boba Fett look great too through uh. a trailer. So. Yeah, I'm ba- I-, I bagged on Boba Fett. I love Boba Fett, but I just bagged on it, Kyle. You gotta give me that. <laughs> hey, I told you, look at it at objectively. You look at everything in there. When you look at every, if you if you look at the score, you look at everything. You look at all the aspects of it as a true critic. Like, look at it not as a Star Wars fan, but if somebody told you, I'm gonna give you money to tell me how this movie really is. Or how this TV show really is, you have to look at it like, like that. And there's a lot of bad things that happened in, in Book of Boba Fett. It just was very bad directing, very bad screenwriting. It like I said, I like it as a standalone, but I don't like it as, you know, part of Star Wars. It, I think it discredits Star Wars. That's just my personal opinion. All right, so I think that we are done. We have been on here for two hours and 22 minutes talking about Kenobi. I hope you guys have fun and enjoyed us, you know, ranting about this and giving our opinions. And we will see you on Wednesday to talk further about Kenobi. Until then, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you, uh, you know, <laughs> hit the thumbs up, all that good stuff. You know, subscribe, whatever you got to do. I don't know all that crap. I know I say it every week, but I forget. Um And we are out. Peace, y'all. May the force be with you. Much love. Thank you for tuning in to LSR. If you've enjoyed the show, consider subscribing so you can be notified when new episodes are released. If you would like to be a guest on the show or just want to give us some feedback, feel free to email us. You can also reach out to us on all major social media platforms. Lightsaber Radio is produced by PicFilm Media and is a Swaycast original starring Kim Lanise, Garrison Turcott, CJ Elliott, and Kyle McDaniel. And don't forget to join us next time for more adventures in a galaxy far, far away.